It's time for another episode of Cute Mascots Gone Bad. It's the 103rd edition of Oregon's Civil War between the Ducks and the Beavers. And for the first time in this historic series, both teams are headed to postseason bowl games. Oregon State hasn't been to a bowl game since 1965 when head coach Tommy Prothrow was in charge. Back in those days, the Beavers dominated this interstate rivalry. Now, their fans are hoping that Dennis Erickson has his team on the verge of beginning a new era of glory years. Just don't expect the Oregon Ducks to give their furry little friends from the north a nice pat on the back. Mike Bellotti's team remembers the 44-41 double overtime loss in last year's version of the feud. And the vision of Beaver fans celebrating on their home turf isn't something they will stand for. The lines and the artificial chirp have been drawn. Both sides have plenty of ammunition. Now the question is, which team has more heart? Oregon State, Oregon, the Civil War. Next on Fox Sports Net. presents Pac-10 College Football. It is the 103rd Civil War battle as the Oregon State Beavers battle the Oregon Ducks. These two schools have been tailgating and partying all week long. Excited about one of the most important games in this rivalry's history. And hi everybody, I'm Steve Fiziak. This is Tom Ramsey. Welcome to the longest college football rivalry west of the Rocky Mountains. Oregon and Oregon State have been playing each other since 1894, and really not since 1964 when the winner went to the Rose Bowl, has this game meant so much. Two schools now seven and three. Both teams know they're going to a bowl. Question is, which bowl are they going to? Well, I, I know both head coaches are awfully happy. They're assured they're going to go to a nice bowl. They have to have some things work out for e each other. But really, the battle on tonight's field, I think, goes back to last year's game. A double overtime victory by Oregon State. And I'll tell you what Dennis Erickson has done for his team this year. He's made them believe, and they're not satisfied quite yet. How big is this rivalry? We talked to both coaches. For the fans now in the state of Oregon, this is a big game. This has bowl implications. This has conference championship implications. Uh, it's not just going to be looked at by the people in this state. Uh, it's going to be looked at nationally in that, in that regard. So I think that there's a, a sense of pride, a greater sense of pride, and certainly because of that, a greater sense of scrutiny to the game. Rivalry games are, are the most fun to be involved in, and obviously probably the most competitive. You've got guys that maybe have played together in high school or against each other in high school, guys that live in the same town. Uh, guys that are competing against each other and then obviously you're in the same state so it's bragging rights for a year and so uh, they're always fun games but they're always the most competitive games and probably the most important games and both coaches told us the absolute key to victory was ken simonton versus reuben drones whoever runs better well i know both head coaches are going to rely on their running backs an awful lot tonight kenny simonton may get the ball upwards of 30 times that's what dennis harrison told me tonight before the game of course he comes in second in the conference in rushing and then there's Ruben Drones, who can carry the football as many as 45 times in a game. Well, Ruben Drones, they, they were expecting rain tonight. I don't know if they're going to get it, but Ruben Drones is capable of carrying this offense as many times as possible, and he has done it quite a bit. Joey Harrington, he can be dangerous, throwing to a great core of receivers as well. Right now, the temperature is 53. There's clouds about, no rain yet, but they do say there's an 80% chance of rain, and those running backs could be affected. The great backs like Ruben and drones of Oregon and Ken Simonton of Oregon State. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by the people inspired to build vehicles for your mind and heart. Nissan, driven. The battle for state pride in Oregon is ready to go. Standing room only at Oxford Stadium for the 103rd meeting between Oregon and Oregon State. 
We talked about the running backs being the key to success in this game. That means James Lofton has to talk about the guys who have to stop Ruben Drones and Ken Simonton. James, what do you have? Well, you're exactly right. For Oregon State, one of their keys has been Ruben Drones. And now, you're not going to stop him, but you can only hope to contain him. And that duty falls on a trio of linebackers that's been pretty hot lately. Darnell Robinson, James Allen, led by senior middle linebacker Jonathan Jackson at 6'2", 252 pounds. This guy has the size to take on lead blockers, and he also has the speed to play sideline to sideline. For the Ducks, Oregon, all week long they talked about explosions. That means limiting the explosive plays, and that falls to the last line of defense. Two senior safeties, Brandon McLemore and Michael Fletcher. These guys have to make big hits on the wide receivers and make sure tackles on Ken Simonson. Now this game is as close as it can get. Both teams are seven and three. You know what? During the season, only one penalty separated the two teams. 82 for the Beavers, 83 for the Ducks. The Ducks' big scoring quarter, the second quarter. The Beavers, they like to keep it close and explode in the fourth quarter. As boxing referee Mills Lane would say, let's get it on. It is time to do just that. And there is Mike Bellotti in his fifth year as head coach of Oregon. He told his Ducks, respect Oregon State, but don't fear them. Take it to them early and early at home. The coach at Oregon State, Dennis Erickson, has praised his defense all year long, but he's always had good defenses. Remember his national champion, Miami Hurricane defenses in 1988 and 1991. Look at that. This coach since 49. Kip Taylor to take this team. Well, Washington and Stanford had to lose to send Oregon to the Rose Bowl. Right now, Stanford is beating California in the fourth quarter, 31 to 13, and Washington has just scored again. And they lead Washington State 24-6 late in their game. USC has taken a 10-point lead on UCLA in the fourth quarter of their contest in Southern California. You see the, the overall records, Oregon, Oregon State, really the two hottest teams in the conference. Well, there really is nothing civil about it because last year's was one of the most special in the school's history. 44-41, Oregon State would win it on this 16-yard run by Ken Simonton in the second overtime. And the place went crazy. They tore the goalpost down. You see the series history. Oregon leads it by 10 wins. Oregon State, they won last year for only the fourth time in the last 24 games. Six of the last nine have been decided by seven or fewer points. And both teams enter this Civil War with winning records for the first time since 1969. Yesterday, visiting with the coaches when we left, it was still early. Yesterday afternoon, about 200 RVs tailgating early. I mean, they have been partying all week long. Yeah, this is something that has been talked about all week long. You see the the tailgate city out there, right outside Austin Stadium, and. You know, we spoke a moment ago about Dennis Erickson's defense. They're going to get first opportunity at this Oregon offense as Oregon State's get prepared to kick off. Oregon won the toss, and they will receive. That means Brian Seska will be kicking off to Michael Fletcher and Sonny Cook. And Seska knows he'd love to keep it away from number one, Michael Fletcher. James Lofton talked about in pregame. Not only is he strong safety, but this guy, a fearless return artist. He has returned a punt this year for a touchdown. He's looking for his first kickoff return for a score. It will be Sonny Cook right at the goal line. And Cook is out near the 18-yard line. Well, there's the quarterback, young Joey Harrington, the 6'4 sophomore from Portland, Oregon, played his high school football at Central Catholic High School, where he was an All-American there, and he has talented receivers to go to. A guy like Tony Hartley has more yards receiving than any receiver in Oregon history, 2,531 with 22 scores. Deke Moan moves from left guard to center because of the injury to Ryan Schmidt 
deep bone is their leader on that offensive line, and he has played center in the past. Harrington looking deep on the very first play of the game, and it is incomplete, intended for Tony Hartley. Well, the defensive side for Oregon State, they have been terrific all year long. Sean Ball is their linear, a senior, only six feet tall, 275 pounds. He was a heavyweight wrestling champ in Hawaii. Jonathan Jackson goes 6'2", 250, so he is a run stuffer. And in the secondary, watch for Calvin Carlisle, a fierce hitter at free safety. 5'11", 177. He also is a good cover guy when Oregon goes to three wide receivers. Now they go to the Rose Bowl. Ruben is out to the 22 for a gain of just four yards. It will be third down and six. The tackle made by Jonathan Jackson. And drones into it right away with Sean Ball. Well, there is numbers, 942 yards, four and a half average. But he was injured for about three games this year with a rib problem. He was hurt earlier in the year versus USC. And Ruben Drones is so effective between the tackles. He gets the tough yards. Right now, this is what Oregon State wants. They want a third and six or longer and put the pressure on that young quarterback, Joe Harrington. Harrington is not completely healthy. Looking for the screen. Oh, my. It was almost picked up by James Allen. James Allen, who had the great game against Cal two weeks ago, where he was the Pac-10 player of the week. But Harrington with a misread here. And watch James Allen come. He's going to... Boy, Harrington throws it out in space, and he gets away. Boy, he's lucky there because he threw it to where he thought no one was, and James Allen broke on the ball and almost picked it off. And on the punt comes Curtis Doerr, averaging 42. His longest year has been 75. T.J. Hushmanzana is back deep at his 33. Doerr. And deep 31, Hushmanzana. He's about three yards, but he was hit by about seven Oregon Ducks. So Hushmanzana saying, hey, it is time to get it on. Right. Hushmanzana came in third in the Pac-10, and Pummy turns averaging 10 yards a return. And just him getting up the field, giving Oregon State pretty decent field position helps out. There is a flag in the play. Dennis Erickson in his first year came from the Seattle Seahawks. Chuck McFerrin, our lead referee. And Dennis does not like that. One of the reasons they beat Arizona last week was because they were able to stay away from penalty while the Wildcats committed 16. We'll be right back. Here in Eugene, Oregon, the 103rd meeting of the Civil War, Oregon State in Oregon, and we know who's going to the Rose Bowl. Congratulations to Ty Willingham as a Sanford Cardinal. Beat Cal 31-13 and get the axe. Washington leading Washington State late in the fourth quarter and USC by 10. Arizona plays at Arizona State next Saturday. But Stanford is going to the Rose Bowl. Washington trying to go to the holiday. And here comes Jonathan Smith. Pandora High School in Southern California. Only 5'10", 186. And he immediately goes back to throw, and they have a wide open Martin Mauer, and he's got the first down up past the 45-yard line. Well, his daddy played for Oregon, but he went to become a beaver. Well, what's interesting is they show trips. They have three receivers to the wide side of the field, Jonathan Smith. Effective finding that big tight end. Bauer, he goes 6'4, 240 pounds. That was a gain of 29 yards. And you have to like the aggressiveness of the Oregon State offense right out of the gate. From the 48, it will be awfully difficult to hear for the Oregon State offense. Smith. His man, Bushman Zala, past the 40 and out of bounds. Knocked out by Justin Wilcox. 
Hey, how about that Beaver offensive line, the way they've been setting things? That was Sean Kittner on the catch, not Bushman's out of it. Roddy Tompkins is a fine wide receiver. He has made big catches for touchdowns the last two weeks. He's averaging 24 yards per catch. And at the line, Aaron Cook is the senior, 6'3", 293. This is his third year starting. He's out of Kaiser, Oregon. Two big plays by Oregon State. Simonton slipped and fell, and then Dietrich Moore got him. It rained a lot last night, and early yesterday afternoon, a little bit this morning, but that really has cleared out. Kerry Miller is a fine defensive end. He has five and a half sacks this year, and had a great game against Cal last week. Watch for Peter Sermon in the middle. He has to play even bigger because his mate, Matt Smith, is injured, will not play. Michael Collier gets the start. Brandon McLemore is the free safety, and he is a senior. His brother, Kristen, was an outstanding wide receiver at Oregon. Two interceptions for Brandon this year, and he also will come on blitzes. He has two sacks. Simonson left. Who's there? Yes, it is Tamani Joyner as they go with that nickel package. I think if you're Oregon, that's the way you have to match up against Oregon State. They have so many weapons offensively, they'll spread you across the board. Having that 50 DB in there and Joyner really helps out. Watch him off the edge. He's able to trap Simonton in the backfield. Here the Oregon defense stepping up, making two plays for losses. Well, we talked about the running backs really having to rumble. Simonton minus 10 yards rushing through the air. They've been excellent, but now they face a third at 23. Smith steps up and throws incomplete. It was intended for Robert Prescott, but he was well covered. And Smith, after two big plays, has to see his punter come on. And I really believe this this is going to come down. You don't want to turn the ball over at all. Oregon State's been awfully good of late not doing this. So that really means field position and the effectiveness of the punters coming in. Fessler has been awfully good the last five games. He's over a 42-yard average, but kicking that man right there, Michael Fletcher, one of the best in the Pac-10. He's returned one for a touchdown this year. It was 57 yards. And he angles this one towards the sideline. Instead, it goes back and Fletcher has it. Might go across the 20 yard line near the 23. 40 yards on the punt. Hey, we talked about the 1964 season when both these teams were fighting to see who would go to the Rose Bowl. And Oregon State's Booker Washington scores the only touchdown of the game as Oregon State wins 7 0. It sent the Beavers to the Rose Bowl and their last appearance in any ball game 35 years ago. Hey, we got to colorize that. We got to colorize that clip. <laughs> Back in the Tommy Pro-Pro days. Tell you. Well, those were good years when Oregon State was really winning. Right now, two teams with the longest winning streaks in the Pac-10 at four wins each, beating Oregon and Oregon State. Ruben Jones. Muscles his way past the 30 to the 32. He is a much more physical running back than Ken Simonton. Steve, what you said a moment ago, both teams coming in on hot streaks, four wins apiece. I tell you, drones can bring it too. Flag on the play. This might be about emotion, unsportsmanlike conduct, possibly. As Chuck McFerrin will talk to both captains. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike on the offense. Dead ball, unfortunately, on the defense. The foul's all set. Here at Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon, it is a scoreless game with Oregon and Oregon State. I'm Steve Fiziak, along with Tom Ramsey and James Lofton. We'd like to welcome those of you who are watching Southern Miss at Louisville. Southern Miss won that game 30 to 27, a final score. What a terrific! Shootout, Louisville. A 
flag was thrown at each team for unsportsmanlike conduct. As Ruben Doan, Rohn's really getting it through with an Oregon State defender. Now they give it to Jones and he hammers the middle. He needed to get to the 34 for a first down. Jonathan Jackson, number 39, the middle linebacker, met him at the 39, 34. That's one great matchup, too. 39, Jonathan Jackson right here watching the middle linebacker. He's just going to fill that A gap, takes on the blocker and Ruben Drones. And Ruben Drones is such a great runner between the tackles, but that man right there, Jackson, last week named Pac-10 Defensive Player of the Week, top tackler for the second straight year for the Beavers. Let's see if they give it right back to Drones. Third down and inches. Ruben. He's got the first down to the 36-yard line. He just went right over his center, Deke Bone. You know, a week ago, Mike Bellotti had some trickery early on against the Cal Bears, and it's really because Cal had such a great defense. But Mike Bellotti tonight knows that he has to battle. He has to put his guys, they got to have the chains rolling up and down the sideline, just clanking away so important to keep the ball out of that the hands of that Oregon State offense Jonathan Smith now from the 37 first down play action to draw Harrington sideline incomplete intended for tight end Justin Peel who when the season began was third string behind Indy Wamuo and LaCorey Collins, but because of his blocking ability, he gets the start today. Well, one, of the things, one of the things Oregon does, they watch Peel, he'll come up and run a corner over here. The fullback's gonna come out in the flat, but I'll tell you what, they move the pocket, but the Oregon State Beavers have the answer. They are stride for stride with the receivers, and that's what makes Oregon State number one in pass efficiency in the defense. They've only allowed eight touchdowns on the year. Harrington, quick pass, and it is incomplete. Intended for more, Marshawn Tucker. But Harrington didn't have much time. I mean, Cal hit him and hit him hard. He still does have a third-degree separation of his left shoulder that he suffered really against Washington State and then hurt and they had to take him out and put in A.J. Feely late last week. That's a good point, Steve. Willie Robinson, the defensive coordinator of Oregon State, knows that Joey Harrington's a young quarterback, especially he's faced with a third and ten right now. He's going to bring a lot of pressure, but he's also going to line up in defenses that are perceived pressures and really there might be a zone blitz. He'll drop some men from the interior just to change up the look. Third and ten. Pressure on, and he is sacked. Back at the 30-yard line, Jonathan Jackson on the blitz. There is a flag down. Wow, how about this switch on third down? Looks like they're going to punt instead of penalty. Well, Jackson comes with the blitz and just... Boy takes on Ruben Drones. Harrington not able to get the ball off. It still will be third down. Offsides against the defense. Jackson, when he shoved Harrington down, turned because he thought Joey had let go of the football. I tell you, if you're Oregon, though, third and five is a lot easier to make than third and ten. It changes your play call completely, and I think you still have to find the tight end underneath or number two, Tony Hartley, if you're Oregon. They'll throw again. Harrington has had time. Completes it to Marshawn Tucker. First down at the Beaver 48-yard line. But Joey, whose father, John, was a quarterback for Oregon in 1966 through 69, really has been excellent after taking over A.J. Feely, and so too has Marshawn Tucker's excellence gone up in the last three ball games. Well, the receiving core of the Oregon Ducks really can stretch the defense. Marshawn Tucker, Keenan Howery, the true freshman, and Tony Hartley, the veteran, who actually really turned up his production of late as well. Hartley comes into tonight's game with 41 catches on the year, averaging over 16 yards a catch. Double tight end. This could be a run to drones. They like to run with that look. They'll go Ruben's way. And not much there. Whoa, the Beavers smelled that one out. Sean Ball led the way. 
Tole Talataina was also there, the left defensive end. And the defensive front, Willie Robinson, the defensive coordinator, told us they have got to get the production out of that front seven, and many times front eight as well. Sean Ball, the defensive tackle right there, able to put the hit on him. See what they've done defensively, points allowed. They gave, even though they gave up 500 yards to Arizona a week ago, it was a quiet 500. That's because they forced four turnovers and did not commit one on the offensive side. Draws, sweeps, right side, Ruben out of bounds, near a first down. He still will need about one more for a first down. Third and one. I think Mike Bellotti paid Ruben Jones a very nice compliment this week. He said he never had a better week of practice this year. He went out, worked hard, and having missed the game from a year ago, not able to play in the Civil War, Ruben Trunce knows the emotion of this game. He knows what's at stake. There's two teams going out to battle, but he can carry the load for the Oregon Ducks, and he's had awfully good success here in Austin Stadium. On third and one, all I can tell you is when he plays, the Ducks are at 11-3. and three. When he gets out of there, 4-4. Four four. Drawings left. He beats Jonathan Jackson to the corner, gets the first down, and more to the 25. Calvin Carlisle on the tackle. Boy, here's that quick little pitch that Oregon likes. They fake to the fullback. All of a sudden, they toss it out. Jackson gets really shaken out of his shoes, and Ruben Trones comes in. Throws a shoulder on Carlisle, the safety. Watch this. He, whoop, there he goes. Jonathan Jackson, one of the top tacklers for the Beavers. And Carlisle finally over there to make the hit on drones. Play action. Harrington, end zone. LaCorey Collins breaking up. Beautiful defense by the freshman, Dennis Weathersby. Pass it to LaCorey Collins. That kid has just gotten better week after week after week. In the last three games, he has just been lighting this out. Great coverage that time and great pattern recognition by the Oregon State defense. Weathersby knows they're going to try to throw a corner out of that formation. LaCorey Collins, the big tight end. The ball's up high, but Weathersby really uses his body well. Defends against the ball, and it goes incomplete out of bounds. <laughs> There he is, Dennis Weathersby, Marte, California. He's a big physical cornerback, goes 6'1", 201 pounds, and leads the Pac-10 with 16 pass breakups. Probably the best cornerback in the conference is Delta O'Neal, who had a terrific game for Cal today. Turn a kick over a touchdown and a punt for a touchdown. But Weathersby might be the next great cornerback in this game. Harrington, one of six through the air. Now he's one of seven, and it's third and ten. James Allen with the pressure. Well, I I know every Pac-10 coach is happy that Tom Holmo, the Cal coach, didn't use Delta O'Neal on offense. But watch the pressure again. That's James Allen, 34, coming hard on Harrington. Again, to Oregon State, able to put Oregon in a third and 10 situation. Oregon on third down tonight, though. Three of four already. Let's see if they bring Allen again. Looking deep, incomplete, and Joey starts the game one for eight. Mike Bellotti substituted Joey for A.J. Feely when Feely went through some inconsistencies in the middle of the year, but Feely also had rib problems, a bursa sack problem, knee problems, and he is healthy, and here is Nathan Villegas, a guy who suffered an ACL injury to his knee on a wild play earlier this year, winning a game or sending a game to overtime against USC. Here is the field goal attempt, and it will be wide to the left side from 42 yards out. They have been going with Josh Frankel, Villegas making a surprise start, and with 7.41 remaining first quarter, we're looking for our first score.
Welcome back to Autzen Stadium in Eugene, Oregon for the biggest Civil War game since 1964 when the 7-2 and two Beavers played the 7-1-1 one and one Ducks for a trip to the Rose Bowl. Oregon State won that day 7-6 and played Michigan in Pasadena. There is Jonathan Smith. He has gotten his team to a bowl opportunity in 1999, the last year of the 20th century. And now Jonathan Smith, who has had two long passes before, Really having his first drive shortened by two fine defensive plays by Oregon on their last possession. They run Simonton, not much. Let's go to our college football Saturday studio for an update with Kevin Frazier. Steve, the 102nd edition of the big game is now in the books. Busak to Davis. That's the combination. This is the story. 31-13, Stanford wins. They're headed to the Rose Bowl. There's a party. <laughs> and they will have the axe for the next year. And they'll have bragging rights in that Bay Area. Here at second and ten, the Civil War. The 103rd meeting between these two schools. Play action pass, freezes the linebacker. Push Manzada with the catch out past the 30-yard line. Still short of the first down as McLemore makes the tackle. I want to tell you, kudos to Tyrone Willingham. He really did a nice job this year with the Stanford Cardinal. But I tell you, the guys, the players who stepped up for him, the seniors. He had great senior leadership across the board. And a game like tonight, Oregon State and Oregon, the seniors again have to step up big in the big rival game for each school. Stanford's first trip to the Rose Bowl since 72. Third and four for Oregon State. Three receivers left. Smith going that way on the slant, but I believe it may have been tipped to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Freddie Talay may have gotten his big old paw on it, knocked it down. Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator, had the answer that time. That spread offense, he matched up man-to-man -man across the board. He tells those interior guys, hey, push and fire across the line, but be sure to get your hands up. Jonathan Smith remembers only 5'10", and they can bat some balls down tonight. Well, they've done a great job of forcing turnovers this year. Now the punt by Mike Fessler. Fletcher. He'll try for the return. He slips one tackle. Michael to the 35-yard line. Time out in the field. 6-0-8 to play. First quarter. Oregon will have the football when we come back. They traveled the 45 miles down the road here from Corvallis, Oregon to watch their Beavers battle the Ducks. Great crowd here this afternoon for the 103rd meeting, and this is the 33rd year for Autzen Sitton Stadium. The Ducks going for their 14th straight home win today. That would tie a record set from 1932 to 1936. Oregon with the football. Joey Harrington at the controls. Give it to Ruben Drones. Not much. Let's go to James Lofton. Guys, if you watch this game, it's starting off, it's going to be a defensive struggle. Because what Oregon State is able to do, they're able to get eight and nine guys up around the line of scrimmage. And the reason why, Hayward and Weathersby are locking up one-on-one -on -one against the Duck receivers, and they don't give them any room to breathe. Jeff Tedford, the offensive coordinator of Oregon, has to find a way to get his receivers involved in this offense. The one pass they caught was the one time that Oregon State dropped off and played an easy zone defense. Well, you just saw the man they expect to have a big game come in. Tony Hartley he had two touchdowns last year in that 44-41 loss in double overtime. And they go to the 47-yard line for the first down to the freshman Keenan Howry. Weathersby was going to be taking either Marshawn Tucker or Keenan Howry. Well, Jeff Tedford, the offensive coordinator, knows one thing. He has to get the ball to Keenan Howry. And as James mentioned a moment ago, Weathersby has been locking up good on the receivers. And right there, they're breaking on the ball. Weathersby delivers a big hit, but not after a first down reception by Howery. So Weathersby goes to the right side where he will play cornerback against Tucker. Give it to Drone. Ruben past the 50. Ruben with the first down to the 40-yard line. But a great block by Oregon against linebacker James Allen.
Watch Darian Latimer, the fullback, right here. He's going to break and get the block on the outside linebacker. Allen, 34, put him on the ground. Ruben Drones up the field once again, lowering the shoulder on Calvin Carlisle. And Boy, that's just good, tough running and a great lead block out front by Latimer. We're still in the first quarter already. Nine carries for Drones, 53 yards. Just keep on giving it to 22. We saw him carry the football 45 times one day against Arizona with a blues lift. James Allen's with the tackle on drones, and we told you about Stanford's victory over California, sending the Cardinal to the Rose Bowl for the first time since 72. Washington has won. They will either go to the Holiday or the Sun Bowl. It's really the Holiday's choice. And UCLA losing to USC as the Trojans win for the first time over the Bruins since 1990, when Tom Ramsey was what, seven years past his uh, graduation <laughs> from that Westwood institution? I was long gone. You were. But the memories you shared with us for so many years until Kate McNabb shot ball your mom's last year. Marshawn Tucker was out of bounds, incomplete, but there is a flag down. Weathersby with terrific coverage, but did he shove Tucker prior to? Boy, you know the emotions run high got his hand in these on. robbery games. Well, I'm not sure where the flag. It looked, I, I'm not sure. Looked like Dennis was holding his jersey. Now, early on, they flag came out from the back judge. That's the call. And he thought he might get away with a little hold. There wasn't a lot of bumping. Dennis Erickson saying, hey, let him play football. And tugging on the, tugging on his jersey just a little bit. Didn't have a, didn't have a lot of jersey, but I tell you, the little bit he had drew the yellow hanky. So Weatherby stays cornerback right side and will take Keenan Howry. Harrington hasn't completed many, but he has his team to the 22. Drones in trouble. Ruben somehow gains about three yards. Tom, I thought he was down for about a four-yard loss. A great piece of running that time, just making something out of nothing. Absolutely nothing that time to the right. But I was going to say, but you see the numbers on Ruben Drones, 11 rushes so far tonight, five and a half yard average. But these rivalries, Steve, are, are, are just so emotional, so impactful. You know, back SC UCLA reminds me tonight Oregon State in Oregon there's an awful lot of color in the stands and a lot of the fans have brought their pom-poms and showing their school spirit tonight. Harrington, Keenan Howry apparently in his trap and there is a flag down on the play. But Joey has started very inconsistently and he usually is right on target with his passes and you wonder if that left shoulder is causing problems. Offsides against the defense. Dennis just asked his defensive coaches, who was that on? Harrington comes in, a 56% thrower. He took over for A.J. Feely. Harrington, only two of 10 so far tonight. But I tell you, I think part of the difficulty is facing that tough Beaver defense. They're attacking style defense. And remember, A.J. Feely on the sidelines, he's able to play, and he's he's mended up. He went through a battle of some injuries himself. Drones. Not this time, Ruben. You will be sacked for a four-yard loss. And the NFL this morning is coming your way tomorrow at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific on Fox Sports Net. Guest is Saints head coach Mike Ditka. Hey, Tom, here's the trivia question. Ditka is one of only two people to have won a Super Bowl as a head coach, assistant, and a player. Who is the other? Well, you'd have to go back a little ways. Would it be Tom Flores? You got it. You're the best. Mike Ditka and Tom Flores, and they'll be talking to Ditka tomorrow. NFL this morning, Jonathan Jackson rallies his defensive troops. Harrington on third and four. Joey, end 
zone. Broken up by Weathersby. Oh, he really electrifies you. Weathersby, Weathersby actually picked the ball off as they went out of the end zone. And again, using his size, 6'1", 200 pounds, watch him go up, make the play. Boy, and he almost came down with one foot in bounds. Watch him, and he's stride for stride with Marshawn Tucker. They both go up. That left foot comes down and almost in bounds. And Weatherby again making a great play. Nathan Villegas missed his first attempt this time. It is good from 33 yards out, and Oregon strikes first. 3 0. Ducks over the Beaver. Oregon with a 3 0 lead over Oregon State. Nathan Villegas hit one from 33 yards out. Nathan, last time we remember seeing him smile, he had just kicked a field goal to tie a game in the end of regulation with USC and then hurt his knee in the process. And smiling again because he is on the field and healthy again. Boy, it's amazing what he did. He really gutted that out. Danny and it hurts. Will kick off not Vegas. They want somebody with a healthy leg out there for a tackle. Special teams and Robert Prescott is really knocked them winding around the 12 yard line. Michael Fletcher was there. Tom Osborne, the special teams coach of the Oregon Ducks, just has his guys flying downfield. They just put the hammer on Prescott. Oh. Michael Fletcher, I'll tell you, he's, he's one of the best defensive backs in the league. Dead ball, personal foul on the third team. Dead ball. So now they'll win the special team to the job, knocking them down inside the 15. Now the penalty will put them inside the 10. Football news comes your way weeknights at 6 o'clock on Fox Sports Net. Get all the football news highlights and analysis you can handle. Not only the pros and college, even high school big skin coverage. Offsetting penalties. Fouls on both teams, so they start with 14. Simonton past the 20. That is the first run, a healthy run that we've seen by the Oregon State offense. And as you said in our opening, Simonton must run well for the Beavers to win. There is a flag, though, down in that run. And Simonton right here, he wants to hit it right off that right tackle. They bring, actually, they match up pretty well. Dead ball, personal foul. And he ducks outside. I think Simonton is so hard to see. If you're a linebacker, Steve, his size, he's not awfully tall. Look at his rush yards this year. 1,266 yards coming into tonight's game. 15 touchdowns. Of course, he trails only Trunk Candidate in the Pac-10 Conference for total rushing yards. And they had a battle a week ago down in Corvallis. He is only five feet seven inches tall, 175 pounds. His sophomore came into the game, needing just 39 yards to break Bill Enyart's record. Most yards rushing in a season by Oregon State. Again, Simon Tim driving his legs to the 38-39 yard line. We talked to Jonathan Smith about this Civil War rivalry. I think it's still a level you want to be the best team on it. I think uh, recruiting-wise, you realize all of that. Uh, and it's your rival game. You know, you'll go down there. It'll be a hostile place. The place will be rocking. And you, you want to go out and compete. These are the fun games you get to go and play. And, you know, the rivalry games are the best games of the year. And it'll be fun. And he led them to victory last year. Had an outstanding ball game. Came on at the end of last season. Took over that starting job. over returns Bryant. Not turned it back as even though you look at Jonathan Smith and he's only 5'10, 185, he is a guy that Dennis Erickson said picked up his offense faster than any quarterback he has had, including Gina Toretta, Craig Erickson, or Tim Rosenball, who he had at Washington State. But last year against the Ducks, over 300 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Well, I was going to say the magic number is no interceptions, and that's what he's been able to do for the Beavers of late. Hold on to the ball, even though his pass 
completion numbers have been way off. He's kept it away from the dark shirts. Oregon showing blitz. Now they back off and rush just three. Smith with time. Incomplete. He had his man open. T.J. Hushmanzada. But it's fourth down and six. Great pass protection that time by Oregon State. They allowed Jonathan, Jonathan Smith the time to check out Hushmanzada coming across the middle. The throw was on the mark. Hushmanzada just unable to come down with it. So on comes Mike Fessler and again to punt for the dangerous Michael Fletcher. Fletcher, we already saw him attack the Oregon State special teamers on the kickoff. Look how aggressive he is. Only five fair catches. Fessler fumbles it. Oregon's going to get it with great field position. handle it cleanly and so many times watch it's a high snap Fessler unable to come down with it Oregon with a block called on Again, special teams plays making such a big difference in really every game but especially the big games it can turn the momentum of the game so quickly Oregon now with great field position and ready to strike again and Oregon in these situations and quick turnovers many times we've seen them go deep They had receivers to either side And Harris Huntington is back to throw And he does find tight end Justin Peel and Peel has a first down inside the 10-yard line Let's go to our college football Saturday studio for a game break with Kevin Frazier Guys, the game is over in the Swamp, Florida, Florida State. Final play of the game. The Gators trailing by seven. Jesse Palmer tosses it up into the end zone. There's a crowd, but no one comes down with the ball. Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles walk away with the victory, 30-23. to What a game there. And, Kevin, we have a terrific one here. The Civil War in Eugene, Oregon. Oregon knocking down the touchdown door with a first and goal at the six-yard line. Jones, lone running back. Ruben, he is mauled by Aaron Wells. Breaks three and is sacked back at the 11-yard line by Jonathan Jackson and Darnell Robinson. But it was Wells who got him first. Well, one of the guys playing so well in that interior, Aaron Wells, he's going to shoot through and make the play on Drones in the backfield. Even though Aaron Wells doesn't come down with number 22 in his arms, the rest of the defense is able to be there in pursuit. Boy, you gotta like Drones' effort though. He's just fighting to get back to that line of scrimmage. Lessens the loss for the Ducks. Loss of four. That's it in the first quarter. Oregon with the lead. Three nothing here at Austin Stadium in Eugene. We'll be right back. Oregon with a 3-0 lead over Oregon State. Our National Carmel game summary. Nathan Viegas, one of two for field goals. Oregon State, only 39 total yards on three possessions. Simonton hasn't run for a yard. Drones, 13 rushes, 54 carries in the first quarter alone. Now it is second down, goal to goal from the 10-yard line. Harrington has not started well passing. He'll run the option. Joey keeps it to the 10 out of bounds of the four. Third and goal from the four. And he was smacked on his left side, and that is where he has that third degree separation of his shoulder. There is a Beaver player down at the four yard line, and that is Terrence Carroll, their strong safety. He's a junior, and this is his third year as a starter. He would be a tough loss. Boy, the option gives you such an added dimension down in the red zone. Harrington, Harrington lowered the shoulder on Terrence Carroll, the free safety. They go shoulder to shoulder, and Harrington, 6'4", 215 pounds, is not a small guy by any stretch of the imagination. And 
Carroll got the worst end of that. I know we were talking about Joey's left shoulder, but it's Terrence's right shoulder that's causing him problems. From the four, Hartley right, Tucker left. Split backs. Harrington looking for Tony Hartley. Incomplete. Keith Hayward Johnson with the coverage, number three on Hartley. Well, Mike Bellotti knows they got to take some shots into the end zone. Oh, he's hoping on that one. And Tom, here's what's scary. They have been inside the 33 times. They've come up with three points. They have been inside the 20 now, twice. And come up with three. They have been inside the 10. And if they are inside the 33 times and come up with only six points, that's not enough. Villegas has it good. Oregon takes a 6 nothing lead. But in this Pac-10 conference, you always see a lot of points. And that is not enough to beat Oregon State. Oregon has a 6-0 lead over Oregon State back in 1992. The Ducks won by just 7-0. Oregon State's quarterback Mark Olford fumbled for the Beavers on his own 22. The result would be the only score of the game by Zechariah Davis. 7-0 Oregon would win that football game. But the way these two teams are piling up points, I don't think that's going to be the case because Oregon averages about 36 points a game. Oregon State averages 31 points a game. Both teams have been playing much better defense the last couple of weeks, though. I know James Lofton's happy. It's not raining like it was then either because that was a deluge in that game. He brought his umbrella just in case. From the goal line, Prescott. Robert is out past the 21-yard line. Let's go to James Lofton. Guys, Oregon State is riding a four-game win streak, and in that four-game win streak, they've only had one turnover. Well, in essence, that high snap to the punter, that's a turnover. The defense trots out on the field. They keep the Ducks out of the end zone. Now the momentum has to be shifted by the Oregon State Beavers on offense. They have to come out and respond. Their defense is playing great. Their offense has to get going. You're absolutely right, James, because they are plus 11 in turnovers in their seven victories this year. Simonson, not much, but in their three losses, they have turned the football over 14 times, including seven to the University of Washington. And there is Mitch White, who was out with a knee problem, a back end, but there is the turnover tail for Oregon State. And they were so successful last week, going four, forcing four turnovers against Arizona and beating the Wildcats 28-20. called by Jonathan Smith. You told me that you felt Oregon State might have more trouble with Oregon's defense than any other defense they might see. Why? Well, Oregon State wants to be able to stretch the field, but I think Oregon has the ability to punch and counter punch. They have the talent and the athleticism to line up the Galeote and his defenders. He has a senior group of safeties. Remember what James Lofton said at the top of the show, Brandon McLemore, Michael Fletcher, even though they might not run as fast as some of the safeties in the league, I guarantee you Michael Fletcher and his experience alone is an additional factor out there. They're able to match up with that team and make that much put that much more pressure on Oregon State. But Oregon is without middle linebacker Matt Smith. College basketball, the fourth annual Top of the World Classic, tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern on Fox Sports Net. Great field, including Oklahoma, Cal, and George Washington. And how about that Cal team defending NIT champs? They won their first game as freshman Joe Ship scored 20 points. And, and Steve, you know, we can talk about the defenses, but essentially the offenses need to step up too, and most, most importantly, the quarterbacks. Jonathan Smith has got to make some throws, some big throws, against this tough, tough duck defense. You're right, he has not been coming up with big plays recently. He does wing it out left side, incomplete, pass too tall. And it was intended for Imani Perkos. Perkos, they really felt he was going to have a big game because he had 
really a poor game in their victory over Arizona last week. Yeah, when I was speaking to Michael Johnson, the quarterback's coach for Oregon State, he mentioned that her coach has got to come up big as well. You see Michael Johnson right there. He's on the on the headset with Tim Lapano, the offensive coordinator, and Dennis Erickson trying to get to the best plays, but again, the onus falls on number nine, Smith. Third and nine. They swing it out to Simonton. Ken out of bounds for the first down. He went out about a half foot beyond where he needed to go at the 32-yard line. Clever play by Oregon State, really taking a page out of the Ducks offensive playbook. Yep, Simonton really just a hot, meaning he is coming out of the backfield with no blocking responsibilities. Justin Wilcox, the senior corner, comes over a little late. Simonton knowing right where the sticks are. See how many catches he has on the season. Don't be afraid to throw him the ball at all. He's got good hands. Now Roddy Tompkins with the catch, breaks the tackle, dives forward, very close to a first down near the 42-yard line. Well, if there's one guy, Mike Bellotti, I asked him, who's he scared of with that Oregon State offense? He said Roddy Tompkins. And it's because of his speed and speed alone. Roddy Tompkins has been able to burn defenses long distance, 24-yard average. He had a touchdown a week ago versus the Arizona Wildcats on third 22. Jonathan Smith got him a deep ball, but that's a healthy average coming into a big game. And all five of those touchdowns have come in the last five games. Three wide, all left side. Simonton, nice hole, set up by Mitch White and Aaron Cook. James. Guys, you see Jonathan Smith walking to the sideline after every play. You know what they actually do? Signal the plays, and he just likes to make sure that there's no confusion. He likes to go over, talk to Dennis Erickson. Maybe he just likes to look in Dennis Erickson's eyes or something. I don't know. Well, all I can tell you is they say he's a winner. Tim Lapano, the offensive coordinator, said he studies. He's trying to get better every day. And he said he is a young man who will eventually be a um, football coach in college football. Second and five. Simon 10. Oh, they read that beautifully. The entire middle led by Peter Sermon was there. And Saul Patu. And, and one of the things Oregon State worked on in practice this week, knowing they were going into a hostile environment, they watched Patu come from that defensive end position. But they know that they were going to face a tough crowd with Austin Stadium, a loud crowd. They were going to have to work a lot of no count into their offense and stay with the play called at the line of scrimmage. Jonathan Smith cannot check off at the line. They've got to go with the play that's called. Great against the run last two weeks. Smith, ooh, boy, he shot that one like it was out of a cannon and really gave him Prescott no chance to catch it. That was a fastball about 92 miles an hour, a little hair on it. Boy, and credit to Monty Joyner, number 23, the nickelback. He's back playing. He had been suspended indefinitely by Mike Pilotti for breaking team rules. And I just think having him back on the field is, is a big difference tonight for the Duck defense. As a quarterback, though, how do you deliver that pass? Did that have too much mustard on it? <laughs> you deliver it lower than shoulder level, I'll tell you that. <laughs> or the safeties will be uh, leaving your wide receivers and sending them to the hospital. Here's Michael Fletcher. He got hit and hit hard at the 22, and Michael doesn't go down. He's the pinball wizard. 44 yards in the front. There is a flag down on the play. Fletcher will run to the sideline as Oregon's deep offense will take over the football with a 6-0 lead. It is against Oregon State. Chuck McFerrin and his crew busy keeping Dennis Erickson and Mike Bellotti a little bit on their toes. And what the heck's going on out there? You want to let them, you want to let them play football in a big rival game. Got a lot of flags that have already come out tonight. And that is their sixth penalty of the game to Oregon's one. That has hurt Dennis Erickson's team more than anything 
in the first half here in Eugene. It's as though they're going to kick over. They're trying to explain it to Dennis Erickson. He's throwing up his arms like, what do you mean you got to kick it again? He doesn't want to kick it again to Michael Fletcher. I can guarantee you that. Well, they mugged Michael about the 20 yard line. That's where the ball would have been. Let's see what the ad is after this. Fletch is now standing at his 25. He's a guy that does not fair catch many. Uh, and what the end result is, is a big momentum boost for Oregon because they're going to get a lot better field position out of this. A dangerous Fletcher was returned three months for touchdowns in his career. Takes us at the 30, and here he goes. Right side. Fletcher to the 45. So it is a 35-yard penalty against Oregon State. Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by the all-new 2000 Buick LeSaver by Buick. Re-engineered to be safer than ever. Steve Kuziak, Tom Ramsey, James Lofton with you. Oregon with a 6-0 lead and at the 45-yard line of the Beavers. Right in the middle of that Oregon State defense is number 44, Terrence Carroll. He is back in the field after suffering a shoulder injury on Oregon's last drive. That resulted in three points. Carroll, their strong safety, a fierce hitter. Thrones, look at that play. Wow. That was Tavita Muala, who will replace Jonathan Jackson next year as a starting inside linebacker. But how quick is this guy? Well, Muala allows watch him right here he's going to come on the blitz Willie Robinson when he has him in the game it's a blitz package and I know Oregon knows it's coming they just can't do anything about it Moal is so quick to the ball he's able to shoot through the gap and make the play and it, hey he can rush off the edge too and create some problems in the pass protection of the Oregon Ducks and they'll be pressuring Harrington again now in second and 13 as he goes play action Wings the pass for a first down inside the 35-yard line to Tony Hartley. Well, you know, who do you go to in the big games? You go to the veteran receiver because if you're the young quarterback, you know one guy's going to run a precise route and one guy's going to be right where he needs to be. That's Tony Hartley, number two. The senior wideout who's just been making his mark on all the Oregon receiving records this year. You see, climbs a ladder, set the receiving yards mark this year. 22 career TDs, two shy of the career mark. Four against Oregon State. That's not bad. Civil War play. Harrington comes up, throws, and look who's there again. He has been everywhere. Four. Micah Moore, you know, Oregon State knows that Oregon is a great screen team, and Moore is going to shoot from his linebacker spot just underneath. Boy, he just makes a great play, scoots by. What happens? Why he's able to do that? He's locked up in man coverage. Micah Moore, 102 tackles, 11 for loss in his career, but able again to recognize a screen coming as soon as those linemen pull and break on the football. Harrington having to go back to the air. Has time. Flips it. Completes it. No first down. They need to get to the 22 for a first down. So it'll be third down in about oh, three, four yards as Tony Harley makes the catch and Carlisle punishes him. Again, Harrington going to his veteran wideout. Tony Hartley, but Calvin Carlisle, number 32, probably playing as well as any safety in the Pac-10. He played so well a week ago versus Dennis Northcutt, one of the most explosive players in the nation, and held him in check. Third and three. Howley and Hartley to the right. Harrington looking that way. Hartley wide open, first down, 10-yard line.
I think Joey Harrington's heating up. Well, and they're doing a nice job protecting. They get a great protection here. Watch Harrington's going to move half roll, and then Hartley's going to come up and just run a corner. I'll tell you, it's a nice, easy throw and catch. Hartley, again, runs a nice route. They move the pocket real subtle, though. They move it outside to the tackle box, and it allows Harrington a little more time. You see Harrington's numbers improving now. 7 to 15, but again, Steve got in the red zone. They've got to come away with six points. Drones to the seven. Moana, Carroll both there for the tackle. Ruben gets helped up. Oregon with a 6 nothing lead on two field goals by Nathan Villegas. When he plays, Oregon really runs the football well, averaging 192 yards, rushing with drones. Without him, under 100. Right around 92 yards for Mike Bellotti. He knows how important number 22 is to his offense. Not only rushing the football, just his presence. His presence allows to make play, make play action work. They'll run him to about the five-yard line, sneaking in between. Deke Moe in the center and Jim Adams the left guard. And that's what Oregon has to do. They got to come off the ball. That offensive line has really got to step up because the Oregon State defensive line and front seven have played so well of recent. Dennis Erickson very happy that that defensive front has not given up a lot of big plays, but right now bigger in this first half than the third down facing them right now. Three wideouts, all in man coverage. Oregon State showing blitz. Harrington, knocked down. No flags. Boy, you Keith know... Keith Hayward Johnson, what a play. Yeah, and when a quarterback and receiver sees man-to-man -man locked up, you kind of get excited because you know you only got one guy to beat, but Harrington with the short drop, Gets the ball out quick, and Hayward Johnson, stride for stride, just makes a great play, breaks on the ball early, able to time it as well as he can and break up the pass play and bring on Nathan Viegas again. That's a nice set of downs for Oregon State, having gotten the ball in that plus territory. From the 20, from 23 yards out, Viegas for his third field goal of the game. And it is good, and Oregon takes a 9-0 lead with 7.25 remaining first half. When we return, Kevin Frazier will give you a preview of the Nissan Halftime Report. It is rivalry Saturday, and we'll fill you in on the rest of the national picture, including Florida and Florida State. Kellen Winslow and I will see you at the half for the Nissan Halftime Report, and Kellen will once again break down the BCS picture and add his own unique slant, which sometimes can be scary. Let's get back to the guys. All right, and you might ask Kellen about that Kansas State-Missouri game where my alma mater beat Kellen's 66 to nothing today, Wildcats over Mizzou. Boy, you're tough. Rub it in a little bit, huh? Hey, how'd your alma mater do? Yeah, you're, you're still <laughs> rubbing it in, aren't you? There you go. James Loftins was successful. <laughs> they beat Cal today. Right, Lofton walking around with a rose in his ear. There's the kickoff by Dan Katz as Oregon has a 9 nothing lead. Kicks it out of bounds. So Oregon State will have good field position at the 35. There is that flag down. We have a great crowd on hand today, 46,115. Let's go to James Lofton. To start this drive at the 35-yard line. They're going to start at the 35-yard line. One of the things that they really need to do, they need to start taking their shots upfield. We know that Josh Wilcox, number 19, is back in the lineup for the Ducks. Nobody likes to try and go deep against these guys. But Roddy Tompkins, number 80 on the other side, has been effective going deep against everybody in the conference. That's the matchup that they're lined up with on this play. I would expect the first play to be a deep ball. You remember last week, third and 22, they went deep to Roddy, and the result was a 59-yard touchdown. Prescott, though, breaks free. Robert with the first down up near midfield. Well, instead of throwing deep, 
one of the things they do do, and they do it so well, they call it the rock and lug. Watch Prescott, he's just gonna swing out, but then it allows Roddy Tompkins to go down the field and get a block on Justin Wilcox. And Jonathan Smith does a great job of just firing the ball out there. And then you see what that play is able to do. It almost turns in to a huge game, but I think it's a, it turns into a significant game in the first half for Oregon State. They rock and lug to the other side, and Prescott can't hold on, but Smith was throwing behind his receiver. And, and they got going to call that a lateral? And it is a lateral. Sure enough, the line judge did call it. Jonathan Smith, they just flipped the formation over Steve and tried to throw it again. Again, they're just going to wing it out here, and it allows this player to go down and block, but... Watch the ball, it'll come on this line here. It's a lateral, and they'll mark it out of bounds where the ball actually went out of bounds. So it's a three yard loss for the Beavers. Timeout called by Jonathan Smith. Oregon really showing a blitz. They had eight on that defensive line. Exactly. And Nick Aliotti, one of the things he was going to show. Show 11 up, sometimes he'll come out of it. College Football Saturday Special Edition starts Friday next week at 11.30 Eastern on Fox Sports Net. Look at the games you can see. Ohio against number 11 Marshall with their great passing offense. SMU and TCU. And Tom and, and I will be at USC as the Trojans will host Louisiana Tech and Tim Rattay. Also, Oklahoma State against Oklahoma on Saturday. That is a great shootout in the Midwest. And I'll tell you, Tim Rattay, now that's a guy that can throw it all over the ball yard. I watched him work out this summer. He and Carson Palmer, some of the young quarterbacks, Chris Redmond from Louisville. You love him. Boy, I tell you what, now, those are some talented athletes, some talented young quarterbacks. And Tim Rattay, I tell you, he can play at that next level. He's a kid that, you know, he's not the biggest or the strongest, but he can spray it all over the place. Now in second and 13, Smith at the line of scrimmage. That is the 46. Two wide left, one to the right. Will they go deep to Tompkins? Yes, they will. Roddy is open. Did he make the catch? No, he was out of bounds. They were picking on Brian Johnson. Corner back who took over for Tamani Joyner when Joyner was suspended with Tamani back for this game. Well, they got to take their shots deep. They got to exploit the speed of Roddy Tompkins. The Brian Johnson, the corner who made the play of the game, the game saving play a week ago versus the Cal Bears. It looked as though Tompkins should have had it. Came down right between his arms with Johnson right there to make the play. Well, right now, Oregon's defense has been outstanding. Two reasons why they have been terrific this year is efficiency on offense and big plays on defense. Oregon has turned it over only 18 times while forcing 27. Last week, they had six interceptions against Cal. Take a look. What, look what they've done on third downs against Oregon State tonight. Over their last three games, only 16%. You've got to get the ball up the field. Incomplete intended for Robert Prescott and Jonathan Smith having one of those first halves and hoping he can turn it around in the second half because Oregon right now with a 9-0 lead with 6.44 to play. And Dennis Erickson shaking his head saying, wow, what do we have to do to figure out this duck defense? Well, you just have to be more effective on third down and not get into those long yardage situations. A fourth, a third and 13 yards, so difficult to complete. They got to get those positive yards on the early downs. Smith, six of 13 for 87 yards. Now Fessler with the punt. Fletcher, no fair catch. Oh, he was slugged down about the 27 yard line, but pops right back up. Let's go to James. Guys, Nathan Viejas is back from that ACL injury. It's still torn. It still has to rehab during the offseason. But what he's doing during this ball game, he has a pair of sweatpants that he actually wears over to keep that knee warm. He had a knee brace on. 
during pregame warm-up, so she took off so that he could kick during the game. And I've watched all four kicks. It seems like each kick has more velocity, more power on it, like he's gaining confidence as the game goes on. Well, he's got all of the Oregon points tonight. There were six and a half minutes remaining. Oregon back on offense. Harrington to Drones. They have really controlled Ruben after a hot start in that first quarter. Pushing, pushing, and shoving. Tackle by Talataina. Sean Ball was in that area as well. Second down, 11 yards to go. Willie Robinson with that attack-style defense, really a 4-3 but he says they're still in the early stages of showing them all aspects of the defense. We'll bring out more next year. Blitzes on Darnell Robinson, but Hartley with the catch at the 32-yard line. Just a gain of four. Boy, in an attack-style defense it is. Willie Robinson... He'll bring guys from all over the place. Watch Robinson come on the corner right off the edge, put the pressure on Harrington, and then Jonathan Jackson as well, the middle linebacker. Robinson on a blitz right there, number five, makes Harrington go a little wider. That's a great play by Harrington as he takes a shot by Jackson as he releases the ball just because he shifted hands with the ball. On third down, Harrington incomplete. His receiver fell down. Tony Hartley with four catches already in this first half. Well, they had the right call dialed up. Jeff Tedford, the offensive coordinator of the Oregon Ducks for Mike Bellotti. Had a third and short, just what they wanted. Hey, here's a guy, Curtis Door, who's been such an effective weapon for Oregon. And a week ago, they ran a fake punt versus Cal. He pulled the ball down and ran with it. But he's able to drive the ball deep. Hit it for 47 yards, first punt of the night. Well, he hammers this one. T.J. Hushmanzana will have the return at the 32. T.J. cut down at the 34-yard line. Stay with us at halftime. We'll take you to our college football Saturday studios and Kevin Frazier for the Nissan Halftime Report. We'll be taking a look at that big showdown on the East Coast, Florida State and Florida, number one versus number three, rivalry weekend. And including, you know, it, it, it's no longer you play for the alums or for your family. You're playing for the BCS. How about Virginia Tech hammering Temple today, 62-7? And you know, that was all about the BCS. We'll show them Virginia Tech did, and they did. And Simonton, well, they have had his number all game long. Simonton just has not been able to run at all. And Dennis Erickson's ace running back came in, averaging over 130 yards per game. But look Boy. at all the punch you've seen. Yeah, that's ugly right there. If you're Oregon State on offense, you just need to... Be productive on third down. That's what it comes down to. And don't put yourself in long yarded situations. Jonathan Smith has to come up, make some throws, and put the ball on the mark. I also think they need to throw on early downs. And Smith throws it away, and really no one was in the area. And there's the late flag. Smith is saying he had his running back in the area. And I'm still looking to find out who he's pointing to. Flag goes down. Well, they tried to get the ball to Kenny Simonton, and Chuck McFerrin, had the ball been close to Simonton, he probably wouldn't have thrown the flag, but it was such an errant throw, it wasn't close to the receiver. Anthony Brown, the offense. Lost the down on the play, third down. Watch, they're going to get the ball on a screen to Simonton, and I'll tell you who made the play. Tell you who makes the play. Michael Fletcher makes Jonathan Smith scramble and break free of the pocket. We'll credit Fletcher on making that play. It was third and 22 last week when they went deep to Tompkins for the touchdown. This is third and 27. Tompkins wide left. Jonathan looking. Sack. At the 15-yard line and 
Skins defense has been terrific. Well, right there, Nick Aliotti again changing it up on defense. They bring a blitz on second down. They put Oregon State in a long yardage situation, and then they just bring the heat. Saul Patu from the defensive end position, who's coming off his best game a week ago versus Cal, there to sack Jonathan Smith. Fessler at the two yard line. Michael Fletcher at the 45. Three and a half remaining first half. Oh, there's a flag. They didn't give Fletcher a chance to even catch that football. So Oregon's going to have very good field position with three and a half to go. That is, what now, eight penalties by Oregon State. Yeah, Ricky Walker, number four. You got to give him room right here to catch the ball, and he doesn't. Ricky Walker just drills Michael Fletcher. Personal foul. Boy, and again, a big play in special teams. You see the penalties on Oregon State, 8 for 82. Oregon only one penalty tonight. But again, this is such a monumental shift, not only from momentum, but field position for Oregon. They're going to line up on the 34-yard line. Of Oregon State. I think if you're Oregon right now, you take a shot to the end zone, you try to send the message real quick that, hey, we're going to try and take a shot because Oregon State has played well defensively in this first half, just giving up three field goals. Well, the reason Oregon State has been winning this year, I mean, if you strictly look at numbers, it is they're forcing turnovers. They have it, force one. Really swing the momentum is by picking one off. Harrington going right side as is Van Keenan Howry out of bounds inside the 30 yard line. James Allen on the coverage and he pushed out Keenan. Well, I tell you what makes that play pass protection up front by the offensive line. They did a great job that time protecting Harrington. Scott Fergus and Josh Beckett, the two tackles. Playing awfully well for that duck offensive front. They need two for the first down. Drones behind Joey Harrington. Ruben gets the call to carry. First down. Is he in? Touchdown. Second and two, a 26-yard run. Boy, watch it. It's just a stretch play outside. Ruben Drones, both the receivers run their men off. Hartley and Keenan Howery. Drones sidestepping right down the sideline, able to scoot in for the score. They have never lost at Oxen Stadium when Ruben Drones has been healthy. He's trying to make it 8-0. Viegas point after touchdown in Oregon with a great first half as a 16 nothing lead over the Oregon State Beavers. That young man has not always been healthy in his Oregon career, but when he has been on the field, he has been extremely successful. Over a thousand yards rushing now this season, 1,022 in the last 26 for the touchdown and 16 nothing lead over the Beavers. Fair catch, called for by Mark Powell, and he makes it to the 20-yard line. There is Drones. How about that touchdown run again? Boy, Ruben Drones, 26 yards, and watch. He's going to get it and then just hit it and be able to bounce it outside. Nice blocking at the point of attack. Fergus, the big tackle, and then it's all Drones and his speed. He outruns Jonathan Jackson and Terrence Carroll to the flag. Both receivers that time doing a good job running their men off. And then it's just all Ruben Drones. As you said, Steve, over a thousand yards with 80 yards on the evening tonight. Beavers need to get going. Smith with time now to Rose. He's scrambling to the right. This is man inbounds. 
Yes, it was. At the 32-yard line, Roddy Tompkins for the first down. Smith made something happen. Boy, credit Roddy Tompkins for staying alive, as does Jonathan Smith. He stays alive from that rush of the Oregon Ducks, but Roddy Tompkins works back down the sideline. He gives Jonathan Smith something to throw it. That's a great grab. Boy, right sidestepping, running into Dennis Erickson there. Oregon State needs to score for momentum. There's a rock and lug again, and there's Robert Prescott trying to get a first down. He'll come up about a yard shy at the 42-yard line. Michael Collier on the tackle. Michael Collier stepping in for Matt Smith, the injured inside linebacker. Matt Smith has been such a good player for that duck defense. Michael Collier called into action tonight alongside Peter Sermon, the other inside linebacker. Simonson, oh, Oregon State's defensive line has just been everywhere. Saw Patu started it. Michael Collier finally wrapped him up. Oregon defensively has just been super. Yeah, Galeotti early on, Joyner. They got the number, they got Simonton's number there, and then, well, I tell you, they're swarming to the ball. They're all over it. Saul Patu, number 48, leading the way, and there's the architect of that defense. Nick Galeotti, defensive coordinator, and Ken Simonton has been limited to three yards rushing on 11 carries. They'll give it to him again. And Ken will get the first down as he goes out of bounds to the 46-yard line, shoved out by Brandon McLemore. But here's a guy who came in averaging about 130 per game. Steve, finally, they're able to convert on third down. It's because it's a short third down, third and two. That's more like it. They can hand the ball to Kenny Simonton. He can wiggle and break free. But, boy, only eight yards, less than a yard a carry have to get more production out of him and credit like you said a moment ago the defensive line of oregon so far tonight smith deep tompkins incomplete brian johnson had a hand on him but would not give it up and there's no flag in the play brian johnson's not a big guy he's about 165 pounds he's running He's got a pretty good grab of Roddy Tompkins' arm. <laughs> That's one way to slow down Roddy Tompkins. Brian Johnson a little bit out on an island covering Roddy Tompkins, and that's how that offense, they need to throw on first down. That's part of what Oregon State has to do just to get Oregon to play off him a little bit. Smith, incomplete. He had a man right in his face as the pass was intended for Benny Johnson, the backup tight end. And Oregon's really getting pressure on the very small Jonathan Smith, who's only 5 feet 10 inches tall. And, and what they did, Steve, they brought both safeties. You see McLemore coming here, Fletcher coming from the outside as well. Again, Oregon mixing it up, and this time third and 10, they can, they can show blitz but yet drop back and play zone and make it that much more difficult on Jonathan Smith to read it. Main coverage on Perkholz. Smith goes to the other side. It's incomplete. And again, Johnson with terrific coverage on Roddy Tompkins. And Smith, again, has come up empty. See what Oregon's able to do. They bring blitz on second down. And then on third down, it really was a, a man and zone combination. Just a man underneath. Safety's playing zone to take anything deep, and Jonathan Smith nowhere to throw the ball. Fletcher at his own 20. Fessler hammers it inside the 20, inside the five, and into the end zone. So Oregon will start their offense at their own 20-yard line with one minute and 10 seconds left in the first half. Stay with us again at halftime. We'll take you to our college football Saturday studios and Kevin Frazier for that Nissan halftime report. Report on a big game with Florida State and 
number three Florida. That was the best of the rivalry games in Florida State with a seven-point win. Well, of all the highlights, Florida, though, did have a Hail Mary that I'm sure the fellows will show you with. So Michael Fletcher, what about the job he has done? Well, he's done it all. Not only does he play defense, he runs down on kickoff, special teams, he returns punts. One of the top punt returners in the Pac-10. Then he made a good decision a moment ago, letting the ball scoot into the end zone for a touchback. Ruben Jones. Terrence Carroll wraps him up after a three-yard gain. Nice play by Carroll. Good solid tackler from that free safety position. And I tell you, if Ruben Jones is coming and making defensive backs make tackles. Then you know the Oregon offensive line again doing a good job locking up that front seven. Keenan Howry. Moves to the left side. He also has Sonny Cook with him. And they will hand that football off to Drones. And Drones is up near the 30-yard line. And that may be the final play of the first half. Well, Oregon and Oregon State came into this game meeting for the 103rd time and right now the heroes of this game have been on the defensive side with the fellows from Eugene, Oregon. At the end of the first half, it is Oregon 16, Oregon State nothing. But now let's go to Kevin Frazier in our college football Saturday studios for the Nissan Halftime Report. Third Civil War with the Oregon Ducks leading the Oregon State Beavers 16 to nothing. And Steve Fiziak again with Tom Ramsey. And right now, Oregon is 3-4-3 three in three. what they wanted to do. They wanted to pressure Jonathan Smith. They wanted to slow Ken Simonton. They've done that. And they wanted to run Reuben Drones 80 yards, including a 26-yard touchdown. Well, Reuben Drones been, has been very effective tonight, really keeping Oregon State's defense off balance. And Oregon State has not been able to counter. Kenny Simonton has really been held in check the whole night by that defensive front of Oregon. And as we check the first half stats, you'll notice that Oregon State running the football minus 27 yards Tom yeah I, I think what ends up happening this is such a big key here minus 27 it equates to only 82 total yards for Oregon State and I'll tell you thus far Oregon able to keep the opposition off balance with a nice mixture of run and pass and how about those running back comparisons? Ken Simonton, over 1,200 yards rushing coming in, only 8 yards on 12 carries. Drones, 89 yards, including a 26-yard touchdown run late stages of the first half. There is Simonton, number 35, the little guy at 5 feet 7 inches tall, 185 pounds. And Reuben Drones, number 22, Mike Bellotti said he has never seen him emotionally, so emotionally peaked this week. This is the last game he will play at Austin Stadium. He has never lost a football game here in Eugene. <laughs> the only thing Dennis Erickson does not need is a supercharged Ruben Droz, but that's what he's got tonight. Oregon State will get it first, and how important is it that they score in this first drive to get the momentum back? Mark Mallett calls him with a fair catch, and he makes it to the 28-yard line, and then is hit. Now, he called for the fourth fair catch. There is no flag down. We have time to go to James Lofton. Guys, I talked to both coaches at halftime. You know, I think they go to some school to figure out what to say to reporters because they both said exactly the same thing. We need to start executing a little better on offense. Bilotti said we move the ball, but we need to score points when we get down in the red zone. Dennis Erickson, he didn't have a smile on his face when he talked to me. He said we need to start executing on offense, defensively. Both clubs are playing well, but special teams has really been the turnaround. Oregon has played exceptionally well on special teams. And Erickson's expertise is on offense. They will run Simonton, not much, just a two, three-yard gain. And Oregon State, nothing but punts, including one where they fumbled, and the result was three points for Oregon. Boy, seven punts in a row. Fessler and the one fumbled punt that allowed Oregon a short score and a short field. 
Smith needs to heat up. He's been a big play quarterback throughout his career, even in his first big start against Washington last year, where he threw for 469 yards. And here's a flag going down very quickly on second down. They had eight penalties in the first half alone. Dead ball, false start. On the offense, five yards penalty. One of the biggest problems that hurt him in that first half was getting in long yardage situations. And whether it's second and long or third and long, it's put an added pressure on Jonathan Smith. And he's take, gotten a lot of heat from that front defensive line of Oregon. But yet, I believe in the second half, Steve, they're going to have to come out and throw the ball more on the early downs and not get in those long yardage third down situations. Well, they will here with five wide receivers, and Smith is sacked. Peter Sermon on the blitz. Peter Sermon, one of the top tacklers in the Pac-10, and he's going to loop in the outside he didn't line up in the middle that time he came outside the tackle box sermon look at the career tackles 295 he led the pack 10 two years ago he has a nose for the football ex quarterback in uh, high school they do not blitz this time smith with that long pass and it is caught but very shy of a first down by roddy tompkins they still need another five yards for a first down 13 yards in the play but after the penalty and the sack that is simply not enough and it is three and out and giving it back to oregon and their fans are really steamed up for this one and all that pass completion did for you was gain some extra yards on your punt in essence mike fessler the 38 yard average tonight again kicking the ball away to michael fletcher who's done such a good job handling punts for the ducks tonight Fletcher at the 32. Another high snap to Fessler. He hammers it, sending Michael, who fumbles the football. Oregon State covers it at the 15-yard line. Jake Cookus. There is a flag down, though. Oregon State has needed some help. Oregon has not turned it over in this game. This may be their first. And Oregon came in leading the Pac-10 conference with a plus nine turnover ratio tonight. That was number one in the conference. Oregon State at number three with a plus six. But you're right, they haven't gotten any breaks. And just when you're talking about the exploits of Michael Fletcher, he drops the one. Decline. First down. So Oregon State gets it inside the 20-yard line. If there was a time where the momentum would swing, this is it, Tom. Well, take a look right there. Pushing in the back, and Michael Fletcher that time had some time to catch the ball, but he muffed it. Oregon State finally given the short field to put their offense on the field, but now the crowd starts to crank up. And Oregon State prepared for this. They said we won't do too many checkoffs because of the noise. They'll go with a lot of silent pounce and hand signals. A lot of quick pounce as well, and they do here, and the ball is batted down. May have been Dietrich Moore. It may have been Jason Nicolau. Both were in that area. Yeah, Dietrich Moore was the one that got up to block it. Came off the edge there. Really kind of a half rush, but they know that Jonathan Smith has what in effect is called a short set. He'll take a three-step drop and then get rid of the ball on a timing route. So they know when the ball is going to come out, but it's incumbent upon that offensive line of Oregon State to get those guys' hands down, get the defenders' hands down, hit them in the knees. From the 21, Smith throws it again, catches made 16-yard line. They need five more for a first down. So Roddy has been busy in this game but not too many of the passes outside one of his first in the first possession by Dennis Erickson's Beavers has been really for that many yards. Yeah, Jonathan Smith, this is where you need to make plays as a quarterback. You can't 
Well, why not anyone other than the guy pulling the trigger? And number nine has to read the defense and get the ball in the open. Man. Simonton motion. Smith is sacked. They brought him off the edge and saw Pat Tu with the sack. You can't play much better than Oregon's defense has played tonight. Saul Patu coming off his best game a week ago. Line up here, and he's just going to come on the outside. Really almost comes unblocked. They had, Oregon State had turn protection. They leave Patu. Watch him right here. He's going to come off the edge. Oh, and a tackle. Number 76, Jason White blocks down. All of a sudden, Jonathan Smith gets a headache from behind in the floor number 48. Peter Summit covers the fumble, and now Ruben Drones goes the other way. So as soon as Oregon State does something well by forcing the turnover, they give it right back. So they are minus two in turnovers in this game. Come on. Come on. Don Pelham, the defensive line coach, talking to Patu, encouraging him. Patu with two sacks on the night. Sir. Oregon with their sixth consecutive winning season. On second down and seven yards to go. Thrones. Looks like he's got the first down, needed to get up near the 30-yard line. Tackle was made by Darnell Robinson. Right now, it looks like Oregon State is a little shocked. I mean, they've been punched in the stomach down 16 nothing, given an opportunity to get some points. They fumble. Oregon State trying to draw their offensive line scheme up on the sideline. Aaron Cook, number 50. White, 77. Sykes, 72. The left side of that line. For Oregon State, they, they need to figure out their pass pro and protect Jonathan Smith a little better. Harrington play action, steps up in the pocket, and completes the pass to Tony Hartley for the first down. Keith Hayward Johnson on the coverage. Harrington, after a very slow start, when he opened this game one for eight, has really been very sharp since. Joey Harrington has done quite the job of responding to starting off slow watch him step up in the pocket right here great pocket presence and then he's able just to kind of scoot outside the pocket get a nice throw and a nice catch and the first down for the oregon ducks and harrington has responded well steve as you said coming back from a slow start 10 of 20 for tonight 106 yards looking for that first touchdown but right now he's got moving drones to give it to and moving gets it again and Ruben is past midfield to the 48-yard line in Oregon State Territory. Drones now with 110 yards rushing. Let's go to James Lofton. Guys, I'm watching Oregon State on the field, and when you look at their defensive unit, they don't have big, strong guys. They're a fast, quick type of offense. Oregon is starting to grind them down a little bit. If you watch that last play, Harrington two plays ago had time in the pocket, moved around, and where Drones has been most effective has been beating them on the corners on the edges. So this is a team that has a lot of speed, but they're not making the speed plays any longer. You're right. On the edges, Oregon State is small, and Ruben Drones goes six foot two ten. He's been knocking a couple of defensive backs on the backside. Drones, first down to the 45-yard line, to the 44. The tackle's made by another small linebacker, James Allen, at 6'1", 2'11". Ruben with over 110 yards rushing in this game. Boy, Ruben Drones makes everyone's job easier. And I'm talking the head coach, the quarterback tonight, 114 yards, one TD. The, and the linemen appreciate a running back like Ruben Drones, a guy who's going to hit it up in there. He's not afraid to take it between the tackles. As James said a moment ago, he's been very effective on the edge, but the reason being he's been getting great blocks by the fullback. Harrington this time rolling left. Completes it to Tony Hartley to the 31-yard line. Hartley loses his helmet, but not his head. He keeps his poise, and the Ducks with a first down. 
I like the way the experienced receiver plays and gives Joey Harrington added confidence knowing that Hartley's running precise routes. You see he gets drilled as he throws the ball. He gives a nice, comes back to the ball right there. And he gets hammered. Darnell Robinson, number five. Throws a bit of a forearm and off comes the helmet. He has 151 catches in his career now, and this is Thrones right side. Cuts up field. Ruben still on his feet. 15 yard line to the 11. There is a flag down where Ruben Thrones was tackled. I believe they're going to call a personal foul at the end of the run. After the play, dead ball, personal foul on the offense, 15 yards penalty. Drones, you foul. see how he keeps his shoulders square and up the field, racing the whole time, and then here comes some, there's some late action down the field. The flags come out, Oregon State. A little active after the play. Both teams have gone at it pretty good. There's been some offsetting penalties tonight. And, but that is only the second penalty on Oregon. Meantime, Oregon State has been hit for nine penalties in this game. Well, if you're Oregon, I think the likely thing to do is to hand it to number 22 again. The offensive line getting a good push at the point of attack. But Ruben Drones in a workhorse though so far in the third quarter. So from the 26-yard line, they'll throw it. Harrington looking deep right side. Flag is down. Terrence Carroll breaks it up. And Terrence went down hard. There is a flag down near the line of scrimmage. Well, Joey comes from a family of quarterbacks. His dad, John, we told you quarterback for Oregon, but his uncle's personal foul, face mask, on the defense, half the distance to the goal, first half. That will help the Ducks. Joey's uncles, Pat, Mark, Brian, Tom, and his father, all were quarterbacks at Central Catholic, where he was an All-American quarterback, first Joey Harrington. It's only fitting, too. One of his brothers is the quarterback there now. Yep. Well, Harrington wavered between Stanford and Oregon, choosing his dad's school because it offered him a chance to do something else he really loves, and that is play the piano. Since he was four years old, he's played classical piano. Now he's got Oregon on the move. He's hit the right keys at the right times. This is Drones to the 11-yard line, a gain of three. Two yards from the 11 by Drones. Ruben Drones. You remember that game he had against Arizona when he played with a rib injury? And Coach Mike Bellotti said they would give him 20 carries in the game. That would be great for the team. Well, he carried the football 45 times. And uh, the running back coach kept on saying, Get him in there. Get him in there. And the other coaches were saying, No, take him out. Give him a rest. No, keep him running. <laughs> Jeff Tedford, the offensive coordinator, wanted to keep giving him the work. He did. Over 200 yards rushing, and here's Drones hammering another defensive back to the five-yard line. 130 yards rushing for Ruben Drones, now on 26 carries. Boy, watch this right here, punishing Ruben Drones. Just put the shoulder down, runs right over Terrence Carroll. Boy, if you're number 44, you can't get low enough. He just gets blasted. Finally, Jonathan Jackson, the middle linebacker, over to take 22 down. I mean, this conference has really seen some terrific running backs, but I think in the years that I've been doing the Pac-10 conference, Ruben Drones might be my favorite, and not just because of the way he runs, the toughness that he displays as well. Harrington on the keeper, and Joey Harrington is in for the score. the play that's so hard to defend against the option and they called it right at the right time 
Mike Pilotti may elect to go for two here. But again, Harrington able to execute the option, get up the field, turns it up. And they will go for two. They know the points are awfully important. They also know that Oregon State has a quick strike offense and very likely to get points in a hurry. So these additional points make it 24. Round it off. Harrington rolling right. Well, he will not get the two points, but he now hands off to Ruben Jones, who fumbles at the one yard line, picked up by Marshawn Tucker. Will they give it to him? I'm not sure if they're going to say that Harrington was down. Marshawn says he's got the two. Calvin Carlisle with a big hit. We'll tell you about what happened when we come back. But the extra point is no good. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go! Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, and James Lofton with you at Austin Stadium. And apparently someone's RV has caught fire out in the parking lot. We just hope the owners of that are right here inside. I mean, if they're Beaver fans watching this game, they're going to... They're really going to be disappointed when they leave this evening. Now, now watch. This was the two-point conversion. Ruben Drones gets blasted, fumbles. Marshawn Tucker picks it up. But I believe they called it. They blew the whistle dead when Joey Harrington was in the arms of the defender prior to giving the ball to Drones. Robert Prescott called down at the 19-yard line. Let's go to James. Guys, I talked I talk to the officials during the uh, timeout, and what happened on a conversion play, when a player fumbles into the end zone, he has to be the player who recovers it. So the recovering player cannot, another player cannot recover it. It came back to the spot of the fumble, which is outside the goal line, thus no two points. The old Raiders rule. Ken Stabler fumbling it ahead to Dave Casper. Well, it is beginning to rain here at Austin Stadium. We told you 80% chance. We were told by the forecasters and now beginning in the third quarter. Seven minutes remaining. Oregon State needs to do something offensively. They have been completely shut down by the Duck Bees. Simonton breaking three, and this might be his longest run of the game. Ken was held to eight yards on 12 carries in the first half alone. Oregon has had, had the answer for Simonton. Simonton this time able to hit it right off tackle. Follow Cook, the guard, and then he's able to shake a tackle. It's a good job. Finally, Peter Sermon over there to... Ken had a huge game last year against the Ducks with 157 yards and four touchdowns, including the game winner in double overtime on a 16-yard run. Smith throws, and it is incomplete. All of his passes have been too tall. Let's go to our college football Saturday studio for a game break with Kevin Frazier. Steve, just not a rivalry game, a game with huge implications. Alabama and Auburn and Ben Lear to Marquise Cooper. Forget the roll tide. Right now it's War Eagle 14-6. Auburn leads. When Alabama came into the game ranked eighth in the nation with a record of 8-2. That could really hurt the Crimson Tide chances. Second and ten now. This is the auction stadium, Mike Bellotti has said, he feels is the best atmosphere in college football. He said he believes his team believes it, the opponents are beginning to believe it, but he said the, it gets so noisy down at Austin Stadium that they can't check off. Dead yeah. ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty. Oregon State knew it coming in. They would have to do a lot of silent count, and they go to the line of scrimmage without a lot of audibles 
Jonathan Smith electing to go on quick count a lot tonight and really having to stick with the play that's called the attendance tonight. Boy, standing room only 46,115. The largest crowd ever to witness the Civil War. Started in 1894. This is Simon Tan off the field. He's very close to a first down. He needed to get to the 42 yard line for a first down. Look how enthusiastic he still is. Pops back into that huddle. 16 yards to play, and they do get the first down. And more importantly, the ball's delivered on time and right where it needs to be. Simon Tan catches it right in stride, and you see when the ball's thrown on time. Boy, as Wilcox comes over and just drops a hammer on him. But with the ball thrown on time, it allows the receiver that much more of an opportunity to get up the field and make a play. Boy, that has been like Justin Wilcox all year long. The quarterback turned safety, turned cornerback. Roddy Tompkins trying to get to the sideline. Would get a few, but not much, about the 47-yard line. If Roddy you're Tompkins, five-yard game. If you're Oregon State right now, the range starting to drizzle down here at Austin Stadium and a lot of the rain coverage coming out but what it means for Oregon State is there's 638 left on the clock you got to get a score now get on the board and give your offense an opportunity because it's that much harder to throw a wet ball and it seems like now they got to work Simonton into the mix too a little bit he's just starting to get warmed up Simonton to the 50, Simonton very close to a first down. And I was reading about the history of this rivalry the last week and reading about so many sog bowls, they call them, and fog bowls <laughs> and uh, soup that they would play in because here in the Pacific Northwest, well, as you know, it does rain. And we have been blessed all year long. This is the first time it has really rained significantly in a ball game at Austin Stadium this year. There's been much more rain in games at Corvallis for some reason. That's why they called it the Corvallis Curse. Smith, Prescott, juggles it, holds on, and gains about two. Dietrich Moore in the tackle. There's that play that Oregon State loves to run. It's called the Rock and Lug. Rock, for the receiver, runs a little bit of a rock route or takes a step backwards. And Lug, the uh, receivers out in front blocking, but that time Oregon again have the, has the answer for Dennis Eric and Dennis Eric, Erickson's offensive play calling. I think Dennis Erickson like to throw out the rock and lug and throw it deep and get the rock and roll going. That's right. Second and nine. Simonton inside the 40-yard line. He needs to get to the 37 for a first down, so it'll be third and short. And there's Michael Fletcher again with Brandon McLemore. Two safeties that James Lofton talked about in pregame. Kenny Simonton has such great eyes as he goes off. He's going to look for a place to hit it up inside. He does such a good job finding the crease. Then he's able to spin free and get some more yards. Well, listen to this crowd on third and two. Simonton, he may have gotten, needed to get to the 37-yard line. I think they'll give it to him. There may be a measurement here, but boy, it's all time out. Yeah, it looks like they got a pretty good spot. And I'll tell you what's a nice facet of this offense, Steve. When you're able to come in and utilize a runner like Ken Simonton who came into the game with over 1,200 rush yards, but on a third and two, able to hand it off to your top gun and he's able to plow ahead and get the first down. That show a lot of confidence in young Ken Simonton. They got the first down. Oregon 
playing so well in this month of November, but that is very typical of Mike Bellotti teams. He's always said the games to remember are played in November, and Bellotti is 12 and 2 in his career in November, including 7 and 0 at Austin Stadium. Mike Bellotti has never lost in November at home. Oregon showing blitz, and here they come. Smith in trouble, looping it downfield. Tompkins at the 15-yard line for the first down. A great throw and a great catch. Ronnie Tompkins on a corner route goes up, snares it, and he almost breaks free. Wilcox there to make the tackle on Tompkins. Tompkins is high of 46 catches in 97. 117 career catches. He's been really the consummate team player for that Dennis Erickson squad. Now the 13-yard line, Tompkins goes in motion. To the 10-yard line, a short gain to Roddy. That was his seventh catch. He's been Jonathan Smith's money man. Let's go to James. Guys, it's not raining hard, but the wind has picked up a little bit, so the ball is starting to get a little slick. Believe it or not, no two gloves are alike. See this one with the gold on it? That's actually a special wide receiving glove. You can see it's a little shinier than this dull finish over here. So if you're doing some Christmas shopping for me, I want the shiny gloves. They work better trying to catch the ball. There you go. It's always about you, James. And there are the gloves, Roddy Tompkins. And they are the shiny ones. Here is Simonton. To about the six-yard line. He will need to get to a three for a first down. Three minutes, 15 seconds remaining. And where Dennis Erickson is looking at this, 18 minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Exactly. Simonton again doing a good job squaring his shoulders. And Dennis Erickson knows he's got to punch one in here. The clock definitely not on his side. Another crucial third down for Oregon State. Third and two. Simonton, touchdown! came out on that series of downs and were determined to run the football. Sykes, the left guard, gets a nice block. Tight end Benny Johnson there also. And Simonton finally breaking some runs free. Pretty late, though, in the third quarter. They, Oregon was able to shut him down real good in the first half. And they botched the point after touchdown. Tompkins was the holder. And Roddy upset. All of a sudden, the momentum goes back to Oregon after the Beavers, Ken Simonton, dashed in from five yards out and cut it at 22-6. Oregon State goes 81 yards in 12 plays, capped by that young man, Ken Simonson's five-yard run. Far the best drive for Oregon State today, but on the point after touchdown, Roddy Tompkins, who has the best hands of the team, just missed it. Yeah, what James Lofton failed to remind everyone, when those gloves get wet, that tackiness becomes slippery, and Roddy Tompkins unable to put that one down for the point after, and if you're Dennis Erickson, you hope that this extra point doesn't come back to bite you. Michael Fletcher from two yards deep. Fletcher, high hurdles, a tackler at the 20-yard line. And Ken Simonton, after a very slow start in this game, finally heating up. Ken Simonton finding his stride here in the third quarter. He was able to break a couple free, got the ball in a nice swing pass on time for a first down. And, of course, he capped it off with the run into the end zone, finally put Oregon State on the board. And take a look at the Buick scoring drive for Oregon State. A nice 12-play drive, 81 yards, taken up 425 and capped by Simonton's five-yard run. And you talked at the beginning of the ball game, whoever ran the football best would win the game. And right now, Ruben Drones is about 130 yards, and Simonton 
has just set the all-time rushing record for a single season, 1,339 this year. Bill Enyard, the uh, earthquake Enyard from the old 1960s days. We ran into some of his teammates today. And the earthquake, he used to rumble. Simonton, that also sets the all-time sophomore record in the Pac-10 Conference. Breaking Charles White's old USC record. Joey Harrington gives it to Ruben Drones and Drones. Well, he's just like Simonton. He's electric. And they say he went out of bounds at the 41-yard line. If he doesn't step out, he might still be running. Pilate said he did not step out. Let's see, Mike. Let's check out the replay of number 22 stepped on that white sideline. Well, Drones does a great job. He kicks it outside and catches the corner. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sure enough. Uh, bring it back to there. <laughs> Drones, though, I think he knew he had stepped out, but probably didn't hear the whistle. 148 yards so far tonight, one TD. He's just getting warmed up with 27 rushes. Well, if Oregon State can't stop him, you can put this game in the deep freeze. It will be the Ducks, just 2.18 remaining third quarter, and Drones is running hard. And he continues to run hard, over 150 yards rushing now. The NFL this morning comes your way 11 Eastern tomorrow, 8 Pacific on Fox Sports Net. And look who they'll be talking to, the always wonderful Mike Ditka, first tight end to be inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1988. Big physical guy who really, uh, now his talk is about the same way. He's right. always happy. Not lately. Personal foul was called against Oregon State, so tacked 15 more on, and uh, Dennis Erickson's team has been hurting themselves. 11 penalties. This is the reverse of last week when Arizona committed 16 fouls and lost the game. 28-20 to Oregon State. Yeah, you know, you hope when you go on the road, the penalties don't become a big issue because when you're playing in a hostile environment, if you go out and execute and take care of your business, you usually don't have those types of things happening to you, but you have to play with composure. you got to go out and execute and really try and take the crowd out of the game. Herman Hoaching now in the game, and Herman with the carry in a short game. Let's go to James. Tom, you talked about Ruben Drones just getting warmed up. Well, uh, getting warmed up, he's cramping up a little bit at the same time, too. You know, it's just cool enough tonight where you're working extra hard to keep your muscles warm. You see the trainers on the sideline trying to get those calves loosened up. Now, what he's got to do, he's got to take in some extra fluids. You don't feel thirsty when it's cool like this, but you're still losing fluids. Thank you, Dr. Lofton. Oregon with a 22-6 lead. We'll check on Ruben again. Stay coaching. He busts outside. Flag goes down. And this might be holding. It sure looked like that left side. Offensive line might have been holding for Ho Ching to escape around the left. Boy, and it's a shame they were holding there because Herman Ho Ching, once he turned the corner, he put a licking on Micah Moore. Oh, man. Holding by the offense on a run beyond the line. Senior Mike comes out early. Josh Replay Beckett, down. he's going to get locked up there. He's pretty much balling the defensive end. Scott Fergus is actually the one they called it on. Ho Ching nullifies his run, and boy, did he put the hammer on that Oregon State linebacker when he went out of bounds. Well, it's important for Oregon State, if they're to stay in this game, to stop Oregon on this possession. I and mean, here it is, second down, 24 yards to go for the first down. And Joey Harrington breaks the huddle, sending Marshawn Tucker and Tony Hartley to the right side. Harrington completes it. 
Jake Cook is on the tackle, hardly on the catch. There's still about nine shy of a first down. Hartley able to spring free once again in the defensive backfield and just runs away from Hayward Johnson. A nice crossing route ball delivered on time. Finally brought down there, but at least it affords Oregon an opportunity for a shorter third down, a third and eight. Second, second all time on the career catch list. Seven catches in this game for 106 yards. Back to throw. Incomplete. Diving for the football. Keenan Howry, but it will be fourth down. And now our Oregon sends out their punt unit. And this is smart. That will give Oregon State a long field to go with just eight seconds remaining in the third quarter. And a really well-thrown ball that time by Joey Harrington to Howry. Either Howry was going to catch it or nobody. But how about the time Joey has had? I mean, their offensive line has done a terrific job with this game. And they really have protecting the quarterback and allowing Harrington ample time to throw and opening holes for Ruben Drones. And they were expecting this. Now he'll punt it. And will go into the end zone. Now the flag goes down. Uh, guys downfield. Yeah, I, I think... I think Curtis Doerr is one of the most athletic punters in the nation, and he allows Mike Bellotti a lot of options, but that time they released. the flag, there was no foul. No, no foul. foul. We'll tell you about the fourth quarter when we come back as the Ducks right now with a 22-6 lead over the Beavers. Just a reminder, Fox Sports News will follow the game for many of you, and they will have complete coverage of all the day's action, including a report from Paul Kennedy, who is in Gainesville, and they'll also look ahead to tomorrow's NFL action. That's Fox Sports News primetime. It's right after the game for many of you out there. But right now, let's get back to Eugene. And Kevin Oregon with a 22-6 lead. As we check our national car rental game summary, we'll find the running lead certainly belongs to Ruben Drones. 150 yards. We'll show that to you right after this play. Jonathan Smith from the 20-yard line, first down. He rifles that pass, and it is caught by Imani Hercoach. Our national car rental game summary. Ruben Drones with the edge, certainly on Ken Simonton, 150 to 47. Oregon State on 10 possessions has punted the football eight times. Total yards, duck domination. Rushing yards, again, Ducks. Yeah, it really comes down to rush yards, 163 for Oregon, eight total for Oregon State. They finally got Ken Simonton. That was the good news on track on that last drive of theirs. Smith is sacked. Freddie Tillay. It looked like he wanted to pump with the rock and then go deep. Yeah, they were trying to get something going again. Boy, you watch Talay right there. He's able to just push over Robert Sykes, the guard. Sykes is no small man, 6'5", 325 pounds, but ready to lay 31 tackles, eight for loss in the first 10 games this year. He's able to lower his pad level and get the leverage and make the play on Jonathan Smith. Second and 14. Perkos. First down to the 45-yard line. Monty Burkholz, who's been so quiet tonight, and he came in as the team's leading receiver with 43 catches, didn't catch one last week in their win over Arizona. Jonathan Smith that time with a little deeper drop, and the pattern took Burkholz down the field a little bit more. He's working against Brian Johnson, and there's a big size differential. Burkholz going 6'3", and Johnson about 5'10". Simonton sneaking for a yard, but that is all as they wrap him up with Peter Sermon, the middle linebacker, really playing a marvelous game when you consider that the linebacker has been right by him all the time. Matt Smith not available because of a foot injury, and Sermon has really had to do double duty. Peter, a senior from Walla Walla, Washington. 
greatest linebackers to play in the Oregon Ducks. Screen, Simonson, 50, first down to the 42-yard line. Michael Fletcher on the tackle. Smith beginning to heat up. He came in completing just 33% of his passes last two games, but over 50 in this game. Here's that quick swing to, to Kenny Simonton. He catches it in stride. Watch Fletcher right here. Just put the hammer on him. Stand him up. But Simonton running hard enough, getting the first down. Smith's passing numbers have been a little better tonight. 17 to 29 for 210. Completions of seven different receivers. So they bring in Antonio Battle for Ken Simonton, and they go deep for Amani Perkins. And he juggles with the football. Then the flag goes down. Brian Johnson, whose coverage has been so strong throughout this game, gets caught. Boy, a good read that time by Jonathan Smith. Able to get the ball down the field to Burkos, and then Johnson never got his head around, and that's when the flag came out. What has to happen if you're the defensive back, you got to swing your eyes around, get your helmet around, otherwise, it's face guarding. That's why the flag came out on number 13, Brian Johnson. And that so often happens when the ball is underthrown, and it was. Perkos almost made a remarkable catch. Brian Johnson will not cover Roddy Tompkins. Smith again going deep. This time Tompkins broken up in the end zone by Brian Johnson. Well, here's a kid who's really growing up. I mean, Brian Johnson, I mean, you're going to get certainly graduate Justin Wilcox but you'll get Rashad Bowman back next year and they've got a pretty good secondary they were bound and determined to take a shot deep that time with Roddy Tompkins that time you see how Brian Johnson got his eyes turned around back to the football and the quarterback good coverage that time by Johnson he was the one that made the last game saving interception a week ago in the last play of the game against the Cal Bears second and ten Oregon rushes for draw. This is Simonton inside the 20 yard line, very close to a first down. Boy, that was a play that really worked last week against Arizona. It was a great play. It's one of their top plays, too. The draw, then he's going to hit it up right up the middle. That's nice blocking at the point of attack by the offensive line, and they finally. The old line of Oregon State finally seeming to hit their stride a little bit, knocking the Oregon Duck defensive line off the ball. This is per coach and per coach inside the five yard line. So it'll be first and goal at the four yard line. How about this comeback by Oregon State? Oregon State can put points on the board in the fourth quarter. They've outscored opponents. Opponents 123 to 37 on the year. So you know what they're capable of. And the defense tends to step it up when they know that offense is putting things together. Look how strong they've been in the fourth quarter. Now they'll give it to Simonton. Ken blasts off the left side, and then he is rolled over by Michael Collier and Brandon McLemore and Dietrich Moore. Dietrich, a senior from Anchorage, Alaska. It's third year starting. Once again, Oregon slamping their line. Boy, Dietrich Moore does such a great job exploding to the football from that outside linebacker position. He's not real big, but he's awfully strong. One of the one of the strongest players on that Oregon Duck defense. Smith gives it to Simonton again. He'll leap for another yard. It'll be third and goal, though, at the two-yard line as Jason Nicolau set him back. Look how 
looks like Dennis Erickson really sort of thing with his offensive minds together. Then he'll send in the play. And Oregon defense of a week ago. Remember, Cal had the ball down late in the game, right about the same spot as here. And Oregon defense stepped up, made the plays, and kept them out of the end zone. Nothing inspires a defense more than to have great plays at the goal line. And it's hard to hear down there. Simonton again. He smashes in for the Beaver touchdown. State will go for two, and why not? Because even if you don't make it, touchdown field goal ties the game. But if you make it, it's a real bonus at 14. That's right, they'll make it interesting. Simonton again, keeping his pad level low. He's so hard to pick up behind that offensive line. When he hits the hole, he's going 100 miles an hour. Makes it awfully tough on that defense, and that's just a great piece of inside running by young Ken Simonton. Tell you a great story. Ken Simonton's father, Ken Simonton Sr., played football against Nick Alioti, the defensive coordinator of Oregon. With Nick. That's right. With at Pittsburgh High School in California. Now they're going for the two points. Three receivers left side. They pitch it to Simonton. He sweeps, cuts back, has the two, and all of a sudden it's an eight-point game. college basketball that say well they just needed one possession <laughs> touchdown two-point conversion tie game it's 22 14 10 to 17 to go and on fox sports net that is what the beaver fans want to do defeat those ducks Ken Simonton has been huge in the second half. Limited to eight yards rushing first half. He has 55 in the second half, including two touchdowns. Touchdowns number 16 and 17 this year. So Oregon State right back in this game with 10 17 to play. Sonny Cook and Michael Fletcher. Wrong guy, Fletcher. He picks it up at 10. And Michael is about the 25-yard line. How about Ken Simonton in this game? Boy, Simonton has been so effective rushing the ball inside. You see, he just hits it right outside the tackle. He's able to push Dietrich Moore into the end zone, and then the two-point conversion, he just cuts it up and not to be denied. Again, lowers his shoulders and gets inside. The numbers been progressively better for Ken Simonton. Hit first half only eight yards, second half a 4.6 average, two touchdowns, 55 yards, and give a lot of credit to that offensive line, too. They're doing a nice job up front for the Beavers. And Ruben Jones, after those leg cramps back in the game, walking for Harrington. Harrington finds his target for a first down, Tony Hartley, who has eight catches in this game. He's nine shy of the all-time school record, but he has always had unbelievable numbers against these Beavers in his past. Four touchdown catches for Tony Hartley against Oregon State. This is where Joey Harrington has to be really effective. What Oregon has to do, they got to keep the chains going, obviously keep the ball out of the hands of Jonathan Smith and Ken Simonton knowing how effective they are in the fourth quarter scoring with the football. Oregon State showing blitz. They give it to Drones. Ruben is sacked. And it was Aaron Wells. There's a flag down in the play, but Wells, we smelled that out beautifully. By Aaron Wells. He had a little Thousand Island dressing. He could have had himself a Ruben Sanders. He was so quick to that play. Five yard outside penalty for the ball at the Oregon 41. Well, Jeff Tedford, the offensive coordinator for Oregon, told us First the weather's five. bad. Ruben could run 40 times. He's getting up there as Ruben drones in this game now with 28 carries. Jeff Tedford, what he has to do now, continually mix run and pass, but when you got a first and five, 
pretty far out to throw the ball. They go to Ruben Jones again on first down and five, and they gain about two, three yards. Jones now with 29 here. carries in this game. Jonathan Jackson, the linebacker for Oregon State, he knew that 22 was going to get the ball. He snipped it out. Hey, right now, nice time for play action if you're Oregon. Showed drones quite a bit. They haven't taken a lot of shots deep tonight either. Keenan Howery, number 15, might be able to use his speed in a one-on-one -on -one fashion against Dennis Weatherspy. They run drones. Boy, James Allen was all over it. Stretching it out, making sure drones cannot get to that sideline. Football news is weeknights at 6 on Fox Sports Net. Get all the football news you can handle with the NFL, college, and high school in your area. Just call that pigskin news. Anything you need to know, dial it in. Tell you what I like about Oregon State's defense right now. They know Drew is going to get the ball. They stepped up and they're making some plays now. Big third and three with 7.42 remaining. They try and run the option. Harrington dives forward and fumbles. They say Harrington was down. And they say he was down very close to a first down. Steve, I think the spot may be short of the first down. They're going to they're going to definitely measure it again. Oregon tries to run the option, but the defensive line actually it's again the middle linebacker Jonathan Jackson. Sure enough, his knee was down before the ball popped out. That's a good call by Chuck McFerrin. He was down on the ground when the ball came out. The spot's not going to be not going to be long enough. It's going to be fourth down. It's just a matter of inches. Watch, you're going to see Jonathan Jackson, 39, shoot through, and then all of a sudden, Tyler Taina, there it is. Started the ball loose, but not after Harrington had his knee on the ground. Dennis Erickson has his chance. Oregon has sent on their punting unit. Uh, they have to be efficient. Now Oregon calls timeout. Oh, that's interesting. That will be the first timeout used by either ball club in the second half. Seven and a half to play. Ducks lead by eight. Oregon with the lead and facing a fourth and one. Let's go to James Lofton. Guys, Ruben Drones came off the field and he was adamant about the fact that he thought he could pick up the first down. You know, I don't know if he's done any acting lessons while he's been here at Oregon, but he convinced Mike Bellotti to go for it. Wow. Thank you, gentlemen, for going to surprise you that they'll go for it. Well, it, it does surprise me, even though Ruben Drones hit the 1,000-yard mark tonight, 167 rushing yards pushed him over that barrier, but I am awfully surprised only because if you don't make it, Oregon Oregon State has a short field, and well, I tell you, maybe he's trying to draw him off sides. No, I don't know. The mark is going to be huge by the officials. They didn't give it to Ruben Drones, even though he was doing most of the arguing on the sideline. You know, if I have Curtis Door in my back pocket, the great punter for the Oregon Ducks. I, I think I elected drill it deep. They're going to check the Barrett's going to wait for a first down, but interesting game management call by Bellotti. Credit that one, I guess, to Ruben Drones. And he didn't even get the football. <laughs> he just shoved Harrington in the backside. Joey Harrington, six foot four frame. Boy, he, he's barely, barely made it. He did get a little push from behind by Drones. Off 
awfully close. Gamble in offensive style of the Oregon Ducks. So now from the 46 yard line, they'll have that field. That clock with an eight point lead. Draws, hammers his way for another duck first down. There is a flag down, and it may go against the defense because there was a late hit against Oregon State on that man, Ruben Drones, 11 yards in the carry. Dead ball, personal foul, on the eighth Boy, you talk about a momentum shift right there. Oregon State had the Ducks. Right where they wanted him, really, a fourth down, but then the Ducks elected to go for it on fourth, and then they spring drones free for a big first down gain and a, another costly penalty by that Beaver defense, and Oregon's able to pick up another 10 at the spot of the foul. 14 penalties against Oregon State, 137 yards it has cost them. Now from the 27-yard line, Oregon can really put a dagger into the Beaver heart. Drones against Jonathan Jackson. That is a meeting that will bring some noise. Six and a half minutes remaining in this game. Oregon with an eight-point lead. Mike Bellotti loves his guy, particularly late in the ball game, Ruben Drones. Ruben will be a workhorse, I, I can tell. This week in practice, I don't think I've ever seen him so animated, uh, so focused, so excited about a game. And I, maybe it's because it's his last game in Austin State. Maybe because he didn't get to play against the Beavers last year. He had to watch that game from the sideline, which had to be very frustrating. But I'll, he's one of those guys that, you know, in the fourth quarter, just says, feed me. <laughs> and he wants the football. And they feed him again. And he eats it up for another three yards. So he has 34 carries in this game and very close to 190 yards rushing. Gary Campbell, the running backs coach for Oregon, knows with drones in the game, especially on that home turf, 7-0 at Autzen Stadium, 48 points, over 500 yards of offense. And drones with 138 already. He just... He does say feed me, it's just, and he keeps producing. I think when you're asking for the ball not producing, that's one thing. When you're asking for it and knocking the defense back, that's a whole other story. Such a great competitor, now third and three. They'll go right back to Ruben, cuts up field, bangs one tackle away, and then leans forward, very close to a first down, as he needed to get to the 17-yard line for a first and 10. I believe they're gonna be a little short this time as well, but Mike Bellotti this time electing to have Nathan Viegas come out at three first quarter field goals and able to line up now on a fourth and one for the Ducks. And this one will come from about 35 yards out, well within Viegas range. There is a crossway blowing right to left, but he's on the right hash mark, so it could help him. long enough and it is good and there's a flag down after the play four minutes 17 seconds left in this college football game the 103rd meeting of the Civil War between Oregon and Oregon State Chuck McFerrin conferring with his team of referees, roughing the kicker on Oregon State. <laughs> Nathan Viegas, he's already playing with a torn ACL. Boy, and you see Walker coming off the edge. He really got blocked into him. And look at Joey Harrington. Trying to see how fast you can get to Nathan. Are you all right? Because first Personal was Joey. Foul, roughing the kicker on the defense. First down. Joey kind of jumped into his arms when he made a field goal that tied a game against USC to send it to overtime. And Oregon would win that game. It's the last kick 
We saw from Villegas for quite some time, but he's made four or five in this game. And now, they'll, they'll, they'll take away the points. They're not taking the points. Oregon wants to pound it into the end zone. Now, not really do you take points off the board, but in this instance, you have to get that, that, that much closer to pay dirt. And we still have an easy chip shot for Viegas, but they need to stick this in the end zone. Yeah, but an 11 point lead up. with 417 to go is a lot. Short gain to about the eight yard line by Ruben Drones. That was his 36th power. He now has 192 yards rushing. Defense, averaging 34 carries, 150 yards last four games. He has had quite the appetite recently. And we were we were pretty right on. We speculated he might get 40 carries, closing in on that number. Probably about 20 more than Dennis Erickson wished he had. Well, the Ducks did not have him last year. Mike Bellotti's team lost 44-41 in double overtime to the Beavers in Corvallis. Now Harrington's second and goal. Drones. To about the five, maybe leans forward to the four. A tackle there by Sean Ball, defensive tackle. Ruben hands the football to Jonathan Jackson, middle linebacker for the Beavers, third down and goal. Steve, uh, so, so true, a year ago when, when the Ducks just netted 31 rush yards against that Oregon State defense. I remember Keeley Smith threw for over 430 yards, but last year it was Ken Simonton rushing the ball for 157, four scores, but so far tonight, Ruben Drones the more effective of the two runners. Back to Drones. Tries to get outside. He's down to the three-yard line. Darnell Robinson on the tackle. So they will likely go for the field goal here. But now they've got to get those three points back. They did take another, what, two and a half minutes off the clock or a minute and a half off the clock. Timeout, Oregon State. They're first of the half. Interesting that they would take the time out here as Viegas gets ready to try and give Oregon the 11 point lead. remaining in this football game. Oregon leads by eight. James Lofton. Guys, Mike Bellotti has a master's degree in coaching 101, and what he did at 7.30 with remaining on the clock, he went for it on fourth down, taking points off the scoreboard. Now, if you're really going to get that Ph.D. degree, you take a delay a game here, you give your field goal kicker a better angle to kick this field goal with. Wow. James Lofton. Offense 101, it's not a bad decision, although I, I think Viegas doesn't have a problem kicking off this right hash. Some kickers favor one hash over the other. I think Viegas is pretty comfortable. Either he one. just slams it through. So the lead is 11, and Oregon State only has 232 to not only score, but get the ball back and score again. Oregon has it all their way. Oregon with an 11 point lead with two and a half minutes left in this game. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the University of Oregon and the Pac-10 Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of the University of Oregon and the Pac-10 Conference. This is the man, Ruben Drone, closing in 200 yards rushing in this game. Robert Prescott out it's near the 30-yard line, but special teams so many times can decide games and they have been critical in this contest. Well, this play early on, Mike Fessler unable to hang on to that one, and the slippery ball, Michael Fletcher unable to hang on to that one. Oregon State had it down deep, was able to score, and then Roddy Tompkins couldn't handle the point after touchdown. And Oregon State's first score they did come back and get a two-point conversion on their second score to get 14 on the board. But with that last field goal by the Angus, they now need two scores to get back in the game for a victory. They need to get down and score in a hurry here. Oregon with their prevent defense in. Smith throws underneath. 
and finds his man Sean Hintner for a first down to the 42-yard line. And Dietrich Moore on the coverage, but they don't have much time. 2-12 to play. A complete clock offense. You need to call plays at the line of scrimmage. And surprisingly, the crowd is not too loud right now. Otherwise, it would make it awfully difficult in Oregon State, of course, with five wides lined up in the shotgun offense. Smith escapes. He will run and slide to the 50-yard line. And then no flag. Jonathan wanted a flag. The linesman came up to talk to Peter Sermon. Jonathan Smith did everything in his power to coerce the line judge to throw the flag. Line judge would have none of it. Sermon over there to put a knock on him as he as he slid. I think Oregon State not utilizing the clock to their advantage. Well, he had Amani Perkos with the edge on Fletcher, but he threw it on a line rather than allowing Perkos to run underneath. It'll be third and two. Stay with us because after the game on Fox Sports News, we'll tell you all about Stanford going to the Rose Bowl. First time since 1972, and UCLA and USC have that come out. USC going for the first win in eight years. Florida State, number one versus number one, number three, Florida. All the highlights and next on Fox Sports News. Smith, nope, it'll be fourth down. Fourth down and three, he must go for it with 123 and counting. And there is a player down in the field, Aaron Cook, the senior right guard. So stop the clock with 121. And that is the fifth sack by Oregon in this game. Last week, they did it with interceptions. Oregon with six interceptions. The most since they've had since the 1940s against any ball club. Six interceptions against California. And that's Saul Patu really stepping up tonight, as well as that entire defensive line of the Oregon Ducks. The biggest crowd ever to watch a Civil War game. More than 46,000 on hand. Oregon leading by 11. The Beavers facing a fourth down and three situation at their own 47 and a half yard line. Smith dumps it off and has his man, Sean Kintner, for the first down at the 45 yard line. Well, I tell you what, a great little scramble by Jonathan Smith, able to get the ball finally up the field. Have the play called, moving the chain, stop the clock. And they find their man, Kentner, at the 41, so a gain of three. If Oregon wins this game, the Ducks will go to the Holiday or the Sun Bowl. Holiday Bowl chooses between Oregon and Washington, despite the fact that Washington beat the Ducks. The Beavers go to the Aloha or the Oahu Bowl. That is only if Oregon wins. That's right. And the Pac-10, of course, sending five teams to bowls this year. The Rose, the Holiday, the Sun. And then the doubleheader on Christmas Day, the Aloha and the Oahu Bulls. Smith with time. He had Kintner wide open at the 25-yard line, had it right in the numbers, but Sean couldn't hold on. Boy, Jonathan Smith kind of sidearmed that one to Kintner. Kintner, the redshirt freshman, unable to hold on to it. Smith still improving on those numbers. No interceptions, and yet no TDs. And he came into this game efficient. Not brilliant at throwing touchdown passes, but 15 to 7. Touchdowns over INTs. Third and six now. One minute to play, down by 11. Oregon rushes three. Incomplete. This time, he was looking for TK Bushmanzada. So it is fourth down and seven. This for the game. I think you'd want to, you know, even though it's going to keep the clock running, although if you get the first down, it'll stop the clock, I think you have to run some crossing routes in the middle of the field. We've been trying to get the short dinks outside. and Got to create something across the middle of the field to free someone up.
It's knocked down, and Oregon is going to win this game. Jason Nicolau at 6-2, Jonathan Smith at 5-10, and Jonathan could not get that pass over him. So Mike Bellotti still unbeaten at home in his career at Hudson Stadium. Watch Nicolau there. He puts a good rush, pushes the pocket, and then he's just able to get his hand up. Nicolau batting the ball down, and that was, that was done with a three-man rush. Credit the defensive line of Oregon for really turning up the juice tonight. Only one timeout left, and really not much that Oregon State can do to stop this football game. And so many guys hey, playing their last the game at Autzen Stadium, including our player of the game. Well, there's Justin Wilcox on the defensive side. Did a remarkable job of the great Oregon wide receivers. But Reuben Drones, the senior, who never lost a game at home running the football when he was healthy. 197 yards rushing on 38 carries. You'll hear more of Ruben Drones as he plays at that next level because he's a guy that's got great presence rushing the football and such great balance. He just dumped the ice on his coach, Mike Bellotti, and Mike was the guy who told us he has never seen Ruben so focused, so emotional. Those are the two leaders. Drones, Michael Fletcher. Here's Ruben. <laughs> nice to use ice. <laughs> and Mike just lets it fall. <laughs> well, we've had the Sock Bowl, the Fog Bowl in this series back. They're counted down. And the 103rd Civil War belongs to the Oregon Ducks. And Ruben Drones, what a game. 38 carries, 197 yards, and a 26-yard touchdown run as the Ducks beat the Beavers 25 to 14.